I'm here. Probably doesn't help that I have an Oreo face. No, not at all. I'm sick of seeing it. I can't hear a fucking thing. I don't know what. Can you hear me? Gee, yeah, but can you hear me? I can okay. hear you. Can you hear me? All right. No, I can't. Like it says, everyone can see and hear you. audio test. Okay, like it says, everyone can see and hear you, but that's just here. That's like not over on the YouTube thing right now, correct? Um, <laughs> can somebody, can you answer that there, Gabbett? Yeah, I'm here. I can hear myself on the TV. Shit, I can't hear you for some reason. Someone else said they can hear as well. I'll be right back. I can't hear you at all. Okay.
I'm in the middle. And this is an old mask I found. Okay, Gabbett, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. I can hear you too. Good, cool. good deal. Okay, so uh, they can't see us over on YouTube, right? Yeah, they, can, they, see. Can't... they can see. Oh, they can see and they can yeah, hear I, it too? I, yeah, I have it on the TV. So, working. Oh. Hello. Hello. Well, at least now I can hear you guys. So, is behind the mirror going to actually be on here or is this just going to be you guys? As far as I know, man, behind the mirror is always behind the mirror. And I don't, yeah, I think that's, but like, I, okay. I have no idea for sure, but I think behind the mirrors, always behind the mirror. I was just talking to him in Discord. I didn't know. And he invited me on in chat, so I figured he'd come on. I don't know if he was going to use a voice synthesizer. God, I couldn't get that one out. Or what? How about your telescope? Hop on here. I know you want to talk to me. So can I ask you real quick, Eric? Are, are you um? Are you kind of looking forward to the next next stage of? of whatever your adventures hold for you? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I came out here to do what I wanted to do and it, uh, I don't think anything really got accomplished, unfortunately, except for the fact that, uh, on a state level, there's a little bit more of a movement. So I'm glad about that. Um, really, I, Unlike a lot of people, I think a lot of people came into all this with their eyes kind of closed. Um, I was fortunate enough that when I was doing research, I came across the uh, Brian Von D video. So I kind of knew what I was getting into or potentially getting into when I joined the TPC. Um, and I initially actually wasn't going to join the TPC. Uh, I went out there to kind of have a talk with the leadership uh, because they banned me on Telegram. Uh, which was kind of funny. They, they banned me on Telegram for making the comment. Uh, so, because somebody else had said, so, because they wouldn't tell us what we were doing when we got here. Uh, somebody had said, so are we just going to go to D.C. and then drive back to California? And I made the joke about, uh, yeah, like Forrest Gump did, you know, because in the movie he, he ran from one side of the country to the other, and they banned me for that. How ironic that's what we did. We went to California and we came back, so. Um, but, no, so I went there to, to talk to uh, Brian Brazzi about it, and uh, while I was waiting for the, the convoy to show up, I ended up helping one of the vendors, and it just kind of got, word got out that I was handy and I had tools and whatnot, and that convoy kind of came in with some people that were already kind of broken down and whatnot. We were there for a couple of days. Um, AFC was going to be about five or six days behind TPC. And when I saw how bad TPC's people kind of need, needed a mechanic, I, I just decided, well, I'll roll with them and then catch up with uh, American Freedom Convoy when they uh, got to Hagerstown. Well, D.C. at the time, I didn't know we were going to end up in Hagerstown. And it just kind of ended up turning into a situation where AFC kind of fell apart when they uh, went to the uh, that one racetrack. And then I was like, well, I'll try to make the best of the situation and help out the best I could 
and hope for the best. That's really kind of how it all went down. Were they paying you for your services? I was always curious about that. No, they, they, they never wanted to associate with any of the mechanics due to liability. So anything I ever got was from people that gave me money. And I'll tell you, 99% of them never did. It was all volunteer work. That's what I figured. Yeah. It was just a liability thing. They didn't want to take the liability because if I, not knowing what my mechanical background was, uh, if I had screwed something up and somebody died because of the work that I did, then uh, potentially if they had, had endorsed me as the people's convoy mechanic, uh, they could have potentially been held liable. So they never, that's that's why my, my name, um, even though Trucker G had called uh, uh Patriot Mechanic, the, the People's Convoy Mechanic, um, it did matter. If it was Tom, uh, which is GWT333, when he was lead mechanic, uh, when it was Patriot Mechanic, uh, the people always came to me. So that's why I kind of did the, the People's Mechanic thing, because, you know, out of all the people that were working on stuff, you know, the only time anybody really ever went to somebody else is if I just didn't have time. That's really what it came down to. Right. Yeah. Someone just asked me what my preferred pronouns are. I am a woman. And then someone else asked me why I bother coming on here if I'm covering my face. And I have children, so that would be why. Understandable. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, any more questions? Anything else you guys want to ask me? Someone's asking if you contributed any of your personal funds. Yes. Yes, I actually uh, I started off uh, contributing my own funds. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of what people needed was brake pads, you know, simple stuff, you know. None of it was usually too expensive. It was, you know, $20 here, $50 there. Um, and uh, until uh, Ripta33 had seen or knew that I had spent a little bit of my own cash, most of the people were in good enough shape they could buy their own parts. So it wasn't that often that I was buying parts for people, but there were a few that just weren't prepared financially uh, to be on that kind of journey, and I knew they were kind of in bad shape. Uh, but it wasn't until Ripta 33 basically convinced me to uh, set up a cash app uh, that I wasn't tapping into my own funds. I commend you for that because that was definitely a lot of work for nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I got a little bit here and there. You know, like I said, Santa kind of donated to it. He gave me like $200 for fixing the airline. I mean, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, he probably, if he would have had to pay a tow truck company to come tow his truck, you know, he, he definitely would have paid probably a lot more, but he still didn't have to do that. You know, I mean, I, it took me all of maybe a half an hour, an hour to fix his entire problem, you know, patch him up, get him back there and then fix it the right way once we had the right parts. So, you know, and uh, Joe first responder always uh, paid really well. But like I said, it just, you know, these people weren't working, you know. So, you know, at the time, the first two months I was in my off season, uh, you know, normally I would have been off anyways or doing side jobs. So I had money saved up uh, for that time. It really didn't start hurting me until uh, the next two months, you know, because now I've been here, what, uh, 115 days, so. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it is. Someone asked me if I chatted on this channel much. Um, I actually used to be Papa Jersey J. I don't know if anybody recognizes that name or not, but. I changed it up a little bit. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah, and if you, if you see any more questions on the screen, Gabbett, can you take over that part? Because I, I'm, I can't even see the YouTube chat at all. And I'm just in here kind of for testing. I wanted to see how this whole thing worked because I've seen uh, Wyckoff use it. And I damn near logged into that one night, but just get, didn't get a chance to. So I'm just kind of testing it out. Absolutely, no problem. Come on, Telescope, hop on in. Uh, I will say, though, that 
as much as I, you know, laugh and go on and crack up jokes about the other side, and part of it I totally mean, but as much as I disagree with, like, I've I've seen firsthand some of the heartbreak involved with all this. Like, it's more than just, you know, like our side of things thinking, okay, maybe, gosh, these people aren't thinking, they don't have a brain in their head or whatever. It's more than that. We're talking about people's hopes and dreams. And those hopes and dreams have been shattered in a lot of ways. And, like, I think about that stuff when it comes to those people or when it comes to the people that support the movement and whatnot and I've seen it happen with my mom firsthand. She was a huge People's Convoy supporter, and my mom was devastated when the People's Convoy broke up. And up until that point, it had kind of caused her and I a lot of problems in terms of relationship stuff, you know, arguing about the convoy and whatnot. And so I've got to kind of learn a lot of stuff through it. But I do, I I sit and think about, you know, those people's hopes and dreams and how all of that has dissolved. And I do wonder how that's going to affect people moving on. And maybe that sounds kind of sappy, but those are things I have thought about. Well, the biggest driving thing for me was the fact that I really understood right off the bat that um, it was a, you know, a survival of fittest type situation. Um, they were more than willing to leave people behind and, uh, I just don't get it. You know, there's a lot of military people. There's a lot of, you know, biker type people. And, you know, that's, that's kind of your creed when it comes to, when it comes to either being in the military or or being a biker is you just don't leave anybody behind. And, um, I, I've never been military. Um, I, I consider myself an enthusiast when it comes to bikes. Uh, I haven't joined in, joined any of the, uh, MCs or anything like that. But, uh, the willingness to just be like, oh, well, that's too bad that their car's broken and, you know, we're just going to let them be and they can catch up with if they can figure out how to do it. Um, in this day and age, I mean, with mechanic shops being so overbooked and, uh, you know, parts being scarce to find here and there, you know, there were a lot of vehicles that I could bang out in an hour and they're back with the convoy, no problem, where in a, any other situation, we, they would have been days behind trying to catch up with the convoy, and that would have been the expense of hotels, towing, all that stuff. It, it just, I just couldn't do that. Yeah, Eric, somebody was asking how many vehicles in total were broken down during that time. <laughs> I kept count for a while, and, uh, you know, I, I used to keep count. It got so it got so high. I I honestly don't even remember. Um, I was actually keeping a record of vehicles that would have been out of the convoy that had like uh, major repairs. And honestly, I I don't even remember. You yeah. know, but then there was a lot of other stuff that I fixed that just made people's lives easier. Uh, one example is there was a gentleman by the name of Neil. He had his wife and his two kids, uh, one and two year old, half their electric went out in their camper, uh, ended up being the battery charger that charged the house batteries in the, in the camper had failed and it kept tripping the breaker, which then killed half the power in the RV. I mean, within about an hour of messing around, I was able to disconnect the charger, um, get that circuit back up, order them a new battery charger in about two days it came through Amazon and uh, was able to make their quality of life uh, better because, you know, prior to that, he'd have to sit there and idle it. He'd have to hook up the connector between the trailer and his truck and use his truck running all night just to charge up the house batteries. So, I mean, another example was a lady that had a uh, uh, refrigerator like I have in my in my camper that has the ability to run on propane. Propane is extremely efficient uh, at running refrigerators in RVs, and hers just wouldn't work. So, you know, I spent a little time doing that. And, uh, you know, it, a lot of things, I you know, I also did things that were just quality of life repairs, too. Not, it wasn't always a vehicle that was just completely shot and stuck and broke on the side of the road. Lola wants to know why any of the convoys are continuing at this point. 
well, they've all kind of crumbled. Well, AFC is is leaving the national stage, uh, meaning they're not going to be here in Hagerstown anymore, uh, but they're still going to be supporting uh, the state levels uh, with fundraising and, you know, banners and venues and stuff like that. So they're still going to be working at, at a state level. Um, 1776, as you guys know, I mean, I just got my truck back today. Um, so I do have the opportunity that if I wanted to load up, I could go over to 1776 now. And I may do that for like my last day here in Washington, D.C. area. Um, you know, just to kind of say goodbye to everybody and then head home uh, with Minnesota Mike towards uh, Wisconsin. Um, I'm really not in the loop. I mean, uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't really know anything that they've got going on. Uh, I don't really spend a lot of time watching their streams. Um, a lot of people over there seem like uh, they feel that I abandoned them, even though nobody, you know, it's 66 miles round trip, and I've gone through five tanks of gas uh, between going there and running around and doing things. Uh, that's all coming out of my pocket. You know, it's not like I, it was convoy fuel. You know, I couldn't be there as much as they wanted me to be, and they felt like I abandoned them. So, you know, a lot of the influential people that would, uh, you know, normally would tell me stuff and, you know, keep me in the loop uh, just stopped talking to me. So I really don't know what they're doing or what's going on with them. Um, I considered going to their July 4th thing, but I couldn't get any details. And because I couldn't get any details, I don't do things just blindly. And, uh, you know, I'd rather go home and spend my birthday at home with my friends and family and uh, then go blindly on a plan I don't know anything about. Absolutely. Everyone's asking who Joy is. Hi, Joy. Hi, I thought I'd, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Yep. I'm pretty shy, so I thought I'd be brave and just come on and, and say hi to everyone. Um, hey, Eric, I have just a quick question for you. Um, so what was your favorite part of the convoy? And did the Canadian movement inspire you at all? Or just kind of curious. Yeah. Um well, my favorite part of the, of the movement uh, is really hanging out with my stream, um, interacting with the people that watch me, uh, kind of doing some of the uh, fun videos that we've been doing, uh, honestly. Uh, really, being part of the, the convoy for me has just been a never-ending job, uh, except for the last couple of weeks since we got back here. Um, so I didn't really get a chance to really experience the convoy, you know. It was always uh, one repaired job after another. Um, like I said, until I went to D.C. just recently, I'd never been there, you know. When we were in California, I wanted to go and touch the ocean. I never even did that. So there wasn't a lot that I really enjoyed about the convoy because I never got to really experience it, um, you know. Uh, what it did the, did the Canada convoy up in Ottawa inspire me? Um, I was interested in it. I mean, I, I think there's something wrong in this country. I, I think that, you know, there's problems with the fact that, you know, liberals and, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats, whatever, I uh, can't speak. Uh, it just seems like uh, every time they try to have a conversation, um, everybody's so entrenched in their viewpoint that they're not open to listening to the other other side. So it causes a lot of division. Uh, I've seen that in my own family. I've got some Democrat, Democrat people that are in my family. And uh, when I openly came out, and said that I voted for Trump, uh, they went, and it's like, really? What What does it really matter who I voted for? That doesn't change who I am. That may be my opinion of how I feel the government should be going, 
or the direction that I, I think the government's going, but why is that an issue for the point that we can't relate and we can't have conversations that are maybe not political and still be family and friends and whatever, you know? Yeah. But, I, I but, agree with that, Eric, because, um, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't like to say, oh, I'm a Democrat or conservative because I feel like, hey, I'm a person and I just tend to vote Democratic. Yeah. Um, and I found out my little brother, okay, so he lives in Washington State and we, we've never talked politics. He's like 10 years younger. And I find out he voted for Trump. I was like, you, what? You voted for Trump? What? Um, and so I did. I had to take a step back and think, hey, just because his viewpoint's different, that's fine. That's his viewpoint. You know, he's still my brother and we can have our different viewpoints. So I get what you're saying. And, and that's kind of what I feel like. It's not really... You, know, you can blame the government and the media for dividing us, but I feel like individually as people, we're really dividing each other. So that's just kind of my two cents. I feel the same way. I, I feel the same way, Joy. I feel like we're all culpable for our own, you know, actions and the way we treat each other. And I just think we're treating each other horribly lately. Yeah. We're all, I mean, we're all the same. Yeah. And I've caught I mean, myself, man, treating people shitty as hell yeah, and absolutely. like I have to. yeah yeah you know i mean i mean I'll, i don't want to be an otherer <laughs> i thank ckm like for real i yeah I, I mean, sorry i didn't even know what othering right. was until the other night but go ahead yeah i mean you know i've always thought of myself as a person that votes for whoever i think is going to do the best job. I did vote for uh, for uh, Obama uh, when he first uh, in his first term. Um, you know, normally, honestly, before uh, before Obama, you know, the whole politics thing never really touched my life. You know, there's not much that the government was doing back then that ever trickled down to the point that it affected me in my life. Uh, uh, Obamacare and all that was the first thing that kind of hit me and, uh, you know, ended up being a negative, uh, negative point in my life. Uh, ended up costing me a crap load of money for that insurance. Um, but other than that, uh, Really, anything usually presidents do never trickles down to me anyway, so I, I really didn't care. And um, once that kind of happened, I started sitting here going, I, I really got to sit here and start taking a, a look at what's going on a little bit more. And I started really researching, you know, things. And, um, you know, you know, I think there are some policies that Democrats have that are good. Um, I think there are some that the Republicans have that are, are good. Um, I think the, the real po problem with the government is that we've got too many lobbyists that are buying votes from whether, whether or not it's from a Republican or a Democrat um, and basically corrupting our government. You know, and I think that's, that's where the real problem kind of comes in. Yeah, I could agree with that. A lot of, you know, and I live in Texas. So um, I live in Austin, which is liberal, but it's it's pretty conservative still. And I mean, I would say I'm kind of like you. I didn't really, you know, until the last 10 years or so really, you know, pay attention to politics that much. But and in Texas, it, it can be hit or miss with the politics here. You know, it's, it's big conservative you know, a lot of oil companies. It's just, it's a lot down here. Joy, um, I'm outside of Houston, so I, you know, no, and I think you probably have it a little bit better than I do. Um, it's extremely conservative over here. You wouldn't think it would be just because it's a metropolitan area, but it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, it just is. Like, it's just, yeah. it, it's almost, you have to, you're, you're basically fearful if you're a Democrat in this, in these types of areas. I would never plaster anything on my vehicle or letting anybody know what my political affiliation was in this area because I just, I don't trust the people, unfortunately. 
I felt that way about uh, about putting a sticker or doing anything like that with Trump too, because all the riots and all the all the stuff that was happening, you know, I felt sitting here and expressing the fact that, you know, I wanted to vote for Trump or that I was interested in voting for Trump uh, would have put a label on me because those riots were just getting out of freaking control. I mean, it was insane. Well, you could definitely come down to Texas and feel completely safe with putting that on your on your car. <laughs> Different yeah. story from here. Oh yeah. So. I think Stacy asked a question earlier. She wanted to know how long you you were with the convoy. Uh, right now, I believe the day count is 115 days. Wow. And I yeah. never left. Oh, yeah. my God. Was, I have to say, yeah. I hate I have a question too, for yeah. anybody that wants to answer or even in the chat. How do you guys feel about the 1776 movement being called that, um, you know, being the 1776 restoration movement? Does it bother anybody? Uh, personally, for me, I think it was a little, a little bizarre to pick that date. Um, you know, slaves were not free. Women couldn't vote. And I just thought it was a little peculiar that especially women would be okay with it. I just wanted to know if anybody else had an opinion on that. I think it puts it out in a completely different universe, like off the planet for most people, especially young people, because they absolutely can't fucking relate to um, 1776 anything. Uh, no founding fathers jack shit. Like they cannot relate to that. So I think that puts it out of the realm of anybody that they would kind of want to, have their sights set on to bring, you know, to younger people to bring them into the movement. It sort of just puts them out of the picture completely before they ever even have a chance to get involved in it. That's my Absolutely. opinion on it. And, and that's not, uh, just to be fair, that's not all coming from me. I, I watched a video the other night and there was this guy named American Patriot and, um, the dude had a lot of really kick-ass points. He was on point with a lot of stuff. I don't. I think that was his name, was American Patriot or something like that. And he kind of said something similar to that, and I totally agree with it, and that's why I'm saying that now. Mm -hmm. I, You know, honestly, I think it was just, you know, I believe the declaration... Primetime Patriot. I'm sorry. Primetime Patriot. Go ahead. Fine. Um, I think it, that... It was just, you know, they picked the date because that's when the Declaration of Independence was signed, I believe. I, I don't think, I think a lot of people are reading in a little bit more to it than that, you know. Yeah, I think it's the restoration aspect of it um, that kind of struck a chord with me. But it seems as though now it's just kind of become a geriatric, um, you know, meeting place to discuss God. And I think where they went wrong was you know, making it really secular and um, just focusing on that one point and kind of bringing Jesus into it a little bit too much in order to get a broader spectrum of people wanting to actually, you know, uh, be a part of it. And it's just like, for instance, I think they announced tonight they're going into a town of 5,000 people to go to a parade. What are you doing? I mean, you're not going to get the amount of people that you think you're going to get by doing these small things, it, it almost seems as though they're all just fearful at this point to do anything big and to, you know, get their, their voice out there and, and what their mission is. But I'm, I'm confused by it. And I've been watching since the beginning. Um, yeah. So it, it's, it's become a, just kind of sad to watch. And it's almost like watching a, a car crash. You know, you can't look away. You want to, but, you're rubbernecking on the road and, and that's what it's become for me is it's more of just a, a curiosity. Well, it's always been a curiosity, but it is definitely now I, I just, it's, it's sad, but at the same time entertaining, which is, which is sad in itself. But um, yeah. it is entertaining, but that's another thing that knocks young people out of the mix because among young people, unless I'm completely wrong and somebody can point that out, but a young among young people and even older age groups, uh, religiosity is on the decline and it's a divider it is not a healer and um, religion uh, ruins more of anything than it helps i mean i think um it creates more division anyway maybe that's a 
the better way to put it. Right. Well, religion is man-made. People don't want to hear about Jesus all the time. Um, Right. Well, yeah. And if you don't believe in Jesus, why would you want to hear about it? And I just think that they kind of forgot that there's, you know, this huge subsection of America. If they want to have freedoms restored, whatever freedoms they think they don't currently have, um, you know, blocking out a major part of our country in, in the process of that, it doesn't do them much good. I, I personally think that, okay, not not anything I got from them, uh, you know, because like I said, I'm not really in the loop. I really wasn't in the loop. My my opinion, I guess, is more. They wanted to get more back to what the founding fathers really envisioned the country being. Um, you know, where. Politicians weren't lifelong politicians. You know, they, they went out, they built a life. They came, they, they served their country for a little while. They went back to their life. Um, just things that were more set up uh, the way the country was set up originally. Um, not, you know, we're not talking about things that like women voting and, you know, other stuff like that. You know, things that were documents that were done later. We're not trying, I don't think they're trying to get back to like the original, you know, that way. Um, more so that, you know, just the, the foundation of the government, you know, how it was run, what it was meant to be, things like that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I just, I, I don't think that, that they're, um, I just don't think that they're as informed as they probably think they are. You know, for instance, majority of the founding fathers were deists they weren't they didn't believe in know. jesus you know um yeah. and I, I don't even know if they even know that uh you know you can read the constitution and and, and you know know it back and forth but memorizing something and actually understanding it are two totally different things Plus, i don't think that they have a grasp of the actual constitution i just think that some people have a pocket you know they're, they're they've been pushing these little pocket books um yeah. and you know, I've memorized a lot of things in my life and in the careers I've had, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I, I understood everything. Um, I mean, can can we that. can we at least agree with the fact that we that we can come to terms with the fact that there are problems with the government, or does everybody here believe that the government's just running fine and everything's great? No, no I think there's systematic problems with the government. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think there's probably been problems with our government since inception, but. You know, we we didn't live back in the 1700s, so we're never going to know that part. But absolutely, the government has been handling things incorrectly for a very long time. And, you know, somebody's got to do something. I mean, you know, so the, the, the big question just comes to be is then what do we do? How as a nation, Democrat or Republican, do we get the government back on on, on task the way they're supposed to be? And then what is that? task that they should be on i mean where does it start does it start with term limits does it start with not having people that have been there for a billion years i mean you know is it does it start with they an age limit like they have to be at least 35 to join government so that way they they actually live a life before they become a, a politician i mean where where do we start i mean what's what's the the starting I don't ground. think that's a terrible idea. No, I don't either. Those are yeah. definitely great starting points. Well, you know. look, look who we look. Okay, so if you look at the current president and the last president, we all voted in two elderly men. You know, I don't care what side you're on. They're both yeah. elderly men, you know. Um, yeah, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> What's that? I mean, no one's going to be happy at this right. moment. Because- I think also we're at a we're at a, a point right now in our country where we have the older generation and the younger generation are so far apart at this point. I think at one point, maybe 1950s prior, older generation, younger generation was still on some sort of the same wavelength. Now it's just, I mean, polar opposites. And I think that that's what's caused a lot of dissension as well. And I think there's the older population that's trying to conform and, and make the younger population feel better about everything that they're striving to have accomplished. And then there's the ones that don't care at all. So 
I think what happened with the GOP, unfortunately, is is the humanity aspect of everything has just completely been devoid. Uh, they just, it just seems to me as though they really don't care about human life in the way that they try to pretend or proclaim that they do. Yeah, I agree. And I also agree on the generation because I'm Gen X and I see so many people, Gen X and older, you know, really coming down on millennials and Gen Z. But I think we have a lot to learn from millennials and Gen Z. You know, there are smart kids coming up and that, that frustrates me when I just see people discount, you know, because they do things a different way, but we have to realize they've grown up with technology all their life. It's not their fault they weren't born in the 60s or 70s, you know? And I feel like they actually have to work harder in school now. You know, school, I see what my kids bring home for homework. I'm like, I can't help you with that. Right, how no. old are your children? Uh, so my daughter is, um, she'll be 21 the end of this month, and then I have a 13 year old. Okay, I have a 13 year old as well and a 15 year old. I actually took them okay. out of school in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I will say homeschooling has, um, they've improved leaps and bounds. Um, but we don't do homework or any of that, obviously. It's a little bit more lax. Um, but what I can say about that generation from what I've just noticed with my children is they're a lot more compassionate. Um, you know, there, of course, there's going to be bad kids everywhere or kids that misbehave, but. I just feel even from my generation or previous generations, there just seem to be more compassionate. And I think that that's really what's lacking in in the older generation of a particular, you know, nature. There, of course, there's, there's sweet people everywhere, but um, yeah. the GOP, in my opinion, generally just doesn't seem to, my father is a staunch Republican and he has zero compassion for, for other people. He just doesn't. He could care less what happens to the homeless. He's a he's a Navy veteran of 22 years, and, and you know you can be a veteran. You can you can have served our country. It doesn't mean you're a great person. Um, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. But um, his views on on others of of different races are it's he pretends as though he's not a racist, but deep down I can feel it. And so I really don't talk to him about politics anymore because it just causes major dissension. Um, but it's sad to see because I never saw my father as that type of person until Trump went into office. I, I agree with Trump. When Trump came in and I knew it, you know, when he was from what he said in his pre, you know, election speeches, because uh, my children are biracial, you know, so my husband's black, I'm white and we live in Austin. So, you know, for the most part, there's n no issues, but yeah you know it does worry me it worries me having you know a 13, sorry a 13 year old son and we've had to have the talk with him we've i mean this isn't just talking points on mainstream media this is real we've literally had to have talks with him about you know if people approach you and you know he does have to act a certain way you know it, it was so funny when he was little he would say uh, when he was like five or six and he's real extroverted and we'd go places, he'd be like, oh, people just like me. They just like to say hi. And now he's 13 and having to come to the fact that people see him as a threat, you know? Um, and my daughter is very light skinned. So she kind of looks Hispanic. So she doesn't, you know, she doesn't get that. But the 13 year old, yeah, now, People see him as a threat and the GOP just uses that as, oh, people are just sensitive and no, it's real. Like I have that fear. It's, it's a real fear. Like, and I will say like when we were all watching this rally this weekend, when Alyssa came up with her pride flag, which I love, just her being there triggered people. She, she wasn't harassing people. No. And that just, that's what breaks my heart about this movement. You know what, have your opinions, but when you start harassing people and that's what gets to me, you know? And so that's why I love this BTM channel because I just feel like people can have opinions and like we all come together and, you know, I don't think we're 
being mean to people. You know, yeah, we make jokes, but I don't know. That's just my two cents. It what sounds mean spirited sometimes, but really at the heart of it, it's it's not. It's kind of what I think. Right. Well, like they said in the beginning, facts don't care about your feelings. And I think anytime that I would say anything on anybody's side, I wasn't saying anything to, I mean, I don't know these people, so I'm not, you know, person, I shouldn't be personally offending anybody. Um, but I just think some people just, they can't handle it and yet. You know, two years ago they were screaming it facts don't care about your feelings. And, and now it's kind of flipped. And I just, I simply put out facts. That's it. Um, they're not my personal opinion. Usually, usually it's just something that I'm, I've researched. Um, that's about it. But some things have really pissed me off, like people's retirement funds getting sucked out of them and stuff like that. Like there was no reason for, there was no reason for any of that. And, um, there were people that gave up the retirement money to help the movement and were crushed in the end. It's like, I feel like I just want to say something for those people out there that don't have a voice that got money taken for them when they gave in good faith and. And before I forget, somebody please, I, I think Oreo needs to take the van and paint 1776 Restoration, get rid of the movement, and just have 1776 Restoration and Drywall. It would be perfect for the side of his van. <laughs> Sorry, I... I you know, like I've I said, got jokes, I, I, bad jokes. You're fine, you're fine. No, that's fine, I mean... You know, like I said, I'm a very open-minded person. You know, I, I let a lot of people get away with a lot of things in my chat. And, you know, I mean, if I don't want to talk about them, I just don't. You know, I, but we don't tend to delete very much of anything anymore uh, after I had a conversation with my moderators. So, you know, um, yeah. So I'm getting ready to get out of here, but one last thing about the Constitution thing. Like, there's a lot of people that think that our Constitution sprang out of our founding father's ass in 1776, and it did not. It didn't come about till years later. Right. So um, education's like, super important, and I wish we could find a way to get young people more involved and interested in history. Because for a lot of people, history is boring as shit. Like, I get it until I became interested in history. Oh, my God, I hated it. I would have rather went and got teeth pulled. But, Eric, thanks for hopping in here tonight, and I'm getting out of here. Uh, Gabba, good to see you. And, Joy, thanks for hopping in there. Um, try to do it again sometime. Like, it's kind of scary the first time you do it, but once you do it, it's a breeze. And y'all have a good evening. Thank Take you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, is G okay? I'm gonna hop off too, so I'll just listen listen on YouTube now. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I'll bring up an interesting topic. Um, oh, everybody else is gone. Well, I guess I've got the channel to myself, and basically the chat. I'm watching the chat. So until somebody hops in, I guess this will be like a, a mechanic after dark uh, type experience uh, where I watch the chat on my phone and I'll respond to you guys on here. Um, I do not have a Twitter. I never liked Twitter. I understood the big words just fine, Drew. I actually have a, a very good vocabulary. Uh, I don't use it as much as I used to, but... Telescope says he might jump on. Okay. Eric is now our new leader. <laughs> um, Eric's, I am hungry, actually. I, I need to cook something. I haven't eaten all day. Well, no, I had some hot dogs and taquitos at the gas station when I went to pick up my truck. Um, I've got a question for you. I, I actually have a friend that's a Democrat. And we had a what I believe a, a pretty deep conversation and uh, I asked her, I, I sit here and I said, okay, we all, initially some people sat here and said that 
Biden kind of stumbling in words was a, a childhood stutter. I hadn't heard that at the time. Um, but a few of my friends uh, truly believe that. And, um, I mean, I saw that he was in mental decline. And uh, my friends saw that, that he was in mental decline. And uh, the question was, I asked her, I was like, well, why did you vote for him? And uh, she sat here and she said, I voted the party. So my question is, is how many people feel that they just voted the party instead of voting for the man? And why did you guys elect Biden become the candidate for the Democratic Party over like Bernie Sanders or one of the other options that may not have had that mental decline? Was that just because he was the only candidate that you guys felt had a chance against Trump? Yeah, that, and how did that make you guys feel? Because I know Bernie kind of got it screwed out of that, uh, Landon. Because he, I thought he was going to be your guys' candidate. Okay, Joy, thanks for uh, commenting. Um, I would have looked into Bernie a little bit more. Um, like I said, I, I, I voted for Obama. So, I mean, I've always kind of voted for whoever I thought had the better idea. Um, so to call me a straight Republican really isn't true because I've always tried to judge the man, not the party. I, I would say I'm more of an, I'd be more of an independent than a Republican. Um, so that's kind of the situation in the prison. Face advisors matters to me the most. Um, I would sit here and say that, yes, probably most of the convoy is, is right, um, on the right side. Uh, but we, I do know that there were at least a handful of self-proclaimed, uh, liberals that were part of it. Um. Honestly, like I said before, uh, so this question was, uh, what made me vote for Obama? Um, at the time, I hadn't done a lot of uh, research. And, um, you know, I, I listened to what he said. I, I liked the idea of the uh, health care plan. Uh, I thought it was going to be a good idea. Uh, and maybe if it if in my opinion, it was done better. It could have been, but uh, that's kind of what I vote. Why I voted for him. Hello. I can see you, but I can't hear you. I can see you just fine, but your mic must be muted. Can you see? Can you hear me? Oh, you can. I I can hear you, and I've seen you before. Hello. You, you busted my balls a few times. 
baby. I'm a ball buster. That's what <laughs> I, I do. That's how I, I roll. How you doing? It's for a good cause. I'm good. Hi, Nancy Jean. Yeah, she's having mic problems, I think. Oh, okay. Sweet. We can so, see her, but we can't hear her. Oh, I can see her trying to. Darn it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to have this conversation at this point because it's 8.38 where I am. What is it? 11.38 where you are. But I do want to talk to you, Eric, because I have tons to say and tons to listen to from you about sure. kind of like the overall movement and the time that we're in. And the reason I asked you about Twitter is every Friday I do a Twitter space and it's really a chill place. I mean, literally I have about 20 people. 20 people that come in so it's not like a big deal but golden chariot came on last friday and it was intense because like i talk about ball busting i call that kid golden showers and i will continue to call him golden showers until the day i die however i am delighted if i get the chance to actually talk to him i was banned on every stream by march you were kind, you let me stay, you banned me once because I was mean, but you know, sucks to suck. Um, and right, well, like I, I'm cool with okay, that. Okay, yeah. stop, one second, one second. Don't say stop to me, sweetie. You can no, say no, excuse I'm, me, but don't oh, say stop. Excuse me, okay, well that's, Thanks. that's all I meant by saying. Well, I'm helping you just, because you've been around like okay. people that don't interact with okay. women on the best way, so we're chill. I, I just want to point out, I'm more than willing to let you keep speaking, I just want to point out one thing. When you said I banned you, I oh, your mod ban banned me. Oh, I, okay, I didn't ban anybody. I had a right. I had a I had a little bit of a. I'm new to all this. I'm new uh, to listen, YouTube. Listen, Eric. I don't actually really appreciate you. I appreciate how you've interacted with people, and I I do remember that you said mods were banning people at a certain point. So the bans aside, actually, I understand why I'm banned. It's because. I drop big truth bombs and people can't handle that. And I get it. You can go back to the streams. So, but my point is, is that why we're here at this moment in time in history is far more complicated than a traditional political cycle. It is far, far, far more complicated than a Republican right wing. It's, it's not even about Republican right wing values anymore because that's been diluted by power and corruption inside of the Republican party and the Democrat, like the funny thing about you guys is, is we've been fighting these battles against institutions and organizations since time began. I'm 58 years old. I've been fighting shit for human rights and children's rights since the 70s. My dad was a prisoner of war in World War II and his brother died in the Doolittle Raid. So I've got tons of shit. And what, what my initial argument, we had this beautiful conversation with Golden Chariot and it was all around the demonization of people who have what you would call left-wing values and it, and that's fine we can get into a discussion about what that means and i don't really like the labels but i'm fine to talk about the labels because that's important too but my point is is let's start with the humanization of lolo as a actual human being with actual feelings and a child she cares about and then we can talk about what is this movement and why do i criticize this movement and what do you say to that? You know what I'm saying? And then I can talk to you. And actually, my Twitter is full of shit around how we fucking got here. Because Roger Stone and the fuckery that is around those people, including people that might be near you, Mike Flynn, Ivan Raiklin, and all those motherfuckers, that's what's really getting this. That's what's, you know, the seed that's under the skin that's causing the boil. So anyway, it's too simplified for me to say it that way, but I just was screaming at my iPad, so I thought... Get on there, you stupid bitch, and say something. So I did. I love you all. Okay. I'll shut up now. You're fine. You're fine. I, I, just oh, no. To, <laughs> I'm not just fine, to, but just, that's cool. Just to finish what, what I said, uh, or what I was saying, was that, uh, you know, I take responsibility for what my mods basically did because I was new to this, and I didn't really give them any direction. So basically... They were kind of doing what they had been doing for other people moderating. Oh, trust me. I Apparently, I was on some list that Fry created back in March. So, I am not surprised. I don't so, care. I don't care. It's fine. Ban me every day. So but here I, we are. So, I straightened that out. And I basically, we unbanned everybody. Um, I believe 
Uh, last I checked, we've only got five people that are banned right now, other than sex bots and right. stuff. I think my problem isn't the banning, it's the lack of intellectual integrity inside this movement. It is the lack of understanding about what is happening on the political stage when it comes to protecting children, human rights, blah, 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 blah. The political process, election integrity. You want to talk election integrity? Yeah. This baby, I've looked at all of Doug Frank's bullshit. I'm his worst fucking nightmare. And I've also looked at all of Joe Von Hutton Pulitzer shit too. And Liz mm -hmm. Harrington. Nobody on the right can come at me with your bullshit arguments that Stu Peters spews every day. So that's why I'm here. And I get that you're more, I, I mean, I don't know what you are, uh, frankly. I don't know why you're there. I don't know. Uh, that's fine. I don't want to. I don't give a shit. I'm okay. here to save democracy. And what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to give you the gift of feedback around we could have a conversation, but you're going to have to start by not demonizing me. And I'm not saying you in the singular, you, Eric. I'm saying you in the collective because you're sitting here representing a movement. And now I really will shut up. Oh, my God. Well, I, I don't feel I'm representing the movement. Uh, people ask me oh, questions. Oh, come on. Well, I mean, like I said, y'all can't I, get out of it, right? You got a fafo. You fuck around, you find out. And I'm not saying that in terms of like bad things happening to you. I'm just saying now is what's happening. Guess what Amy Kramer is doing? She's lining up at the DOJ door saying, "Not me," because what happens is when you guys fuck around with democracy and then the heat turns on, then you go, "Oh my God, I'm not part of this." Well, fuck you, honey. You sure are, because I got it on tape. And not you, Eric. I really don't want you to feel like you're being attacked. I'm kind of releasing some pent-up anger, obviously. But it's just really because this matters. And, yeah. I, and I think there's a lack of intellectual integrity inside the, those parking lots um, that is killing people. And it is actually taking money from seniors. And it's breaking my fucking heart. And I'm telling you right now, I watched my father die and my sister die and my mother die. And if Bryant doesn't get some motherfucking morphine in him, he's going to die struggling for air. And none of those morons know what the fuck they're doing. So please, inter interact with them. Get hippie mama out of the way. She's a fucking, like, this is not about her. Oh, my God. Okay, I, I did it again. It just looks like at this point it's a bunch of, or the yeah. convoy boiled down to a bunch of drug addicts who were grifting and didn't have a point while they were out there. Every time I watched... They were talking about absolutely nothing, pointing their cameras at parking lots and bonfires. It's it's a joke, and it's almost, it's funny. It's fun for me to watch it because there's not an intelligent bone in anybody's body out there from what I can gather. All right. um, I, I do want to point out again that, you know, I did say that I watched the Brian Von, Von D uh, video prior to joining this movement. I originally wasn't going to join the TPC. Uh, I was going to join uh, AFC. Um, you know, I've never come out and said I am with this convoy or with that convoy. I've always helped both convoys. And really my mission kind of turned into a situation of, you know, I saw that people were struggling and people were having problems. So my, my personal mission was to keep people moving and hope for the best. Hope that that they were going to get things straight. I saw the fuckery. I saw how badly managed things were. And I just tried to get things on track and help out any way I could. Um, so to sit here and say that I represent the movement. Represent I mean, in I terms of, represent just in terms of what is happening on the ground, not represent in terms of you're a leader within the movement, because I'm smart enough to understand what's happening with leaders and not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about that. I mean, I'm just, oh my God, this thing needs to be like, why did Santa leave within three hours of waking up? That, that, that stinks to high fucking heaven. I'm sorry. Well, he, had go, he had to go to a Proud Boys meeting. I'm sure he had to get there. Oh. Well, I mean, the story is supposedly well, they're trailer, turning, they're flipping back. on everyone. Well, guess what? It's very coinky dinky that the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers are lining up to also get their DOJ free pass, multi pass. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, bah. sorry. Yeah. I'm so Eric, I, I mean, you're, you're, I kept... you're, you're a hero for doing this. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, it, it's fine. I mean, I, I kept my eyes open. You know, I always took everything that happened with with some uh, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sarcasm? No, that's not the right word. Um, but I always kept my head on a swivel and just kind of kept looking around, figuring out what's going on. Um, and that's just what I did. You know, like I said, you know, I hope for the best, uh, you know, tried to help out where I could, you know, like I said, you know, unfortunately, you know, I do feel that the country's broken. Um, you know, not just because of Democrat stuff. I think there's broken stuff on the Republican side too. And this was something that may have affected some change in some way. Uh, do I believe in the Emergency Powers Act? Um, the I'll Emergency Powers Act is what helps us get things produced and helps, and that's what Trump, that was a major mistake of Trump's. Okay, are you are you making fun of me or are you actually no, no, agreeing I'm, with me? Okay, I'm, 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 that's kind of because what, what I'm saying is, is that's oh, okay, sorry, because it's like yeah. again, this is an issue that y'all don't even understand how it works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they understand anything they preach. Yeah, I don't sorry. think there's like I said, I don't think they're if you ask them to recite the Constitution, maybe now that the the new movement has a manual, they can maybe read it i don't even know if half of them can read to tell you the truth i mean i'm going to be honest this is radicalization at its finest over the last wherever many the bump, yes. bump years you're getting 24 7. i don't want to watch cnn i don't want to watch npr i don't want you know like okay don't watch cnn i fucking hate chris cuomo but watch npr watch yamish el sindor watch read something i don't care but find some factual information i work on source documents that was that's what i fucking do and so do that research but there was a laziness inside of this like you didn't even know you there are people in the movement that they're just there to get money and this is getting real sad at this point it's going to get legal okay because i'm going to tell you right now there's some money, donors money, that money, are going to get pissed off and they're watching hippie mama sit on her beautiful new trailer how'd she get the money for that trailer eric have you ever asked yourself that question she just I bought that big ass trailer. trailer oh it's a beauty it has a yeah. fucking awning a front porch she's got a double wide in the back of that lot and it showed up on sunday and i'm like scratching wow. my head going oh wow where the fuck did that come from could it possibly be the fifteen thousand dollars that was handed to booty pop or whoever took it a uh, proud pussy boy i don't know what his name is santa i don't know anyway my point is i don't know how she got that trailer but it's gorgeous and i would love one so if i need to just go and say i'm pissed off at the government and start a live stream i will happily do so and i want to talk about like i will be happy eric to have an argument with you or a debate about emergency powers you know the I'd democrats rather, the I'd republicans rather have a conversation. i would no, baby, I understand that. What I'm saying is I'm happy to have that conversation with you, but I want to have that conversation, which means yeah. we start with truth. We don't do talking points. Or if we do talking points, we recognize that they are talking points. And that, for some of them, not all, some of them, there's nothing behind them. Or it's a manipulation of information to make you react in a certain way. You can't tell me you don't watch. I watch Lindell TV and War Room and uh you know whoever else almost 24 hours a day because i want to understand what's happening to the radicalization point so that we can have that conversation and i can allay the concerns of uh you know hippie mama <laughs> that i'm not i'm not a demon and these particular policies build back better infrastructure those are fucking historic and there's a reason they haven't been done until now. And there actually is a reason that Biden is in office. And I'm not a Biden fan. I'm not anybody's fan. I'm the fan of the person who's going to do something and have some integrity. And what I do know is this. This is a different Biden. And yeah, you can talk about his mental acuity. I mean, he was riding a bike with clips. So I'm sorry. I fall off a bike with clips every fucking time I get on one. I don't care. I don't care if he's whatever. What I'm seeing come out of his administration, as at least at the end of 21, was getting infrastructure passed, which was a motherfucker, and, and making some strides towards Build Back Better, which actually is investments in the things that we need to do for this country. Because let me tell you what the end game is for the boys that are funding your movement and all of the other motherfuckers. The end game is feudalism. 
The end game is privatization of services. And this is not the Democrats advocating for this, by the way. This is the Republicans advocating for this. That's why they deregulate. I mean, I'm getting more into the, the theoretical conversations, but that is where deregulation comes from. That is why it is business friendly. I mean, that is where the merging of this comes. So I can explain to people in terms that I hope they will understand, in terms that I hope are not condescending. I don't wanna be condescending. I'm not fucking smart. I don't have a master's. I actually have a mental illness, so I'm like, I'm having a lot of shit right now. But I can and want to talk to people who are hurt, confused, scared. And let's talk about what the boogeyman really, really is and work together on it. Because, yeah, I may not agree with you on everything, but I might agree with you on some things. But I'm not going to I am not going to stand by and watch the Republican Party, which really has morphed into an animal that we don't recognize. I rec I know what the Republican Party is. I respected it. But I don't. This is a game. This is just a game, because if you've got someone like Trump, who we know was compromised, that's not that's not even a conversation I'm willing to have at this point. He's just the Trojan horse. He's actually not the thing. And you can see it. He's losing power. But what he has done is open the gate for all of this behavior and fuckery. He literally tried to overthrow the election, Eric. He literally submitted fake lists of electors. I have the receipts. I'm not just that person that watches TV. Please look at my Twitter, please. Because I'm bringing the receipts. I, have a, I work with a team of researchers who have uncovered what is Matt Gates doing, what is Roger Stone doing, what is Steve Bannon doing, what is Simeon Mogilevich doing. You know, like we're tracking those fuckers because I want to save this fucking country from becoming a kleptocracy. That's what I want to stop. And if we don't vote people in that are willing to stand up to authoritarian and the lie of the election, stop, stop. I've looked at the data. I've looked at the, at, you know, the, the election, the uh, court cases. Anyway, sorry. The, Trump's the epitome of a sore loser. You know, we grow up saying, don't be a sore loser. He's the epitome. And the, the constituents that follow him, especially the new Republicans, he wouldn't he wouldn't spend one second with you because you have nothing to offer him. You don't have money. You don't have power. You have nothing. I don't know what I don't know why you follow him, because he's going to make America great again, put up a wall so people can't come into the United States, whatever. I mean, could somebody explain to me what? what the convoy was trying to accomplish, what the movement's trying to accomplish now, and what are they doing to accomplish it besides sitting in parking lots grifting? It's This is all grifting, people wanting money. They talk about it constantly. Go get a fucking job. That's how you make money in the United States of America. Or you can grift and get new trailers, I guess. Is it my turn to talk yet? Just wondering. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's great to have a conversation, but uh, you know, unfortunately, right now, because you cut me off, you have no idea where my conversation was going. I let you talk. You know, it's kind of a turn thing. I say what I have to say. Um, then when I'm done, I give you a chance. You say what you have to say. Uh, it's really hard to have a conversation when you just get stepped on. You know. Well, I tried to have this conversation with you on your channel, but your mods kept blocking me. Like I said, you know, and, uh, you know, are you blocked right now, though? No, that's why I'm speaking. No, I mean, are you blocked on my channel right now? Yes. Hold on one second. But anyway, back to my original question. What is the movement about? What are they trying to accomplish? The restoration is what? Because I only have five people that are blocked on my channel right now. Uh, go ahead and if you want to talk about something while I look this up real quick, feel free to. I'm still listening. No, the question I had was, what is, you know, what, if you're still part of this movement, when? I'm really not. Future, okay. Well, then the, the question should be, 
you can't ask anybody in the movement because they just block you. It's, it's you know, the, in the beginning it was, we're, we're about free speech and anybody's welcome. That's a bunch of bullshit. And that's, you know, when, when you start doing that, you're no better than the movement itself, which the movement itself is bullshit. You know, whatever happened to working hard and, and, you know, the American dream, I guess now the American dream is how many subscribers for these people and what the donations for the day are going to be. I mean, why don't they all collectively say no more donations? We want to do this because this is our calling. No, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and I, I hope you have seen on my channel that I, I don't ask for donations. I mean, couldn't our time be better spent a movement for the homeless? Wouldn't that be a better movement that we could actually accomplish something with? Where we go out and, and feed the homeless and, you know, build homes for the homeless with donations, something constructive besides getting new gimbals and phones and tractors and i mean come on man is that your is that your name on uh youtube also is the name that you put on here yes currently you're not banned uh, Landon Wright, John Tony, Open Wheel, uh, John Brown, Comrade Yuri, Nor Dugley, Lee Hall, Smokey B, some name in, in Russian, Fred Ziegel, and that's it. That's, all, that's the only people that are banned on my channel right now. And I'm confident enough. I don't think there's any information that's being spread out here that I can see and I can show you. That I can show you the names. You are not banned. Okay. And I didn't just remove you because I don't lie about that stuff. But like I said, okay. this, is, this is all that's banned. But, I mean, really, my channel, we're, we're not doing a lot of convoy stuff anymore, convoy content. You know, we're just trying to, my, my mechanic, Eric, after dark, is just a place for people more to wind down. I mean, if you want to ask questions about things that may have happened in the convoy, I'm pretty sure that stuff's going to start dropping off because I really don't know much anymore. I'm not over there. I'm going home, you know. You know, if you want to ask questions about stuff that had happened in the past, I'm happy to answer it, but I'm just not really the guy to answer current current information because I don't have it. Like, I didn't know about this double wide. I haven't been back there. I went to their movement uh, or their uh, their rally where the white van was, and I didn't go back to their camp. So I was supposed to have an interview at the telescope that he didn't show up to, so I went back to AFC. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not up to date on the current workings and things they're doing. I do not have a full shop. I've got a three-car garage. I wish I had a full building. But I don't... I, I've said this before. A lot of people don't realize. Um, I, uh, I'm i not a professional mechanic anymore. I, I started off my career and my life as a professional mechanic. I made it up to dealership status. Um, but I haven't been a, a professional mechanic since the early 2000s. But it's kind of like if you're a Marine, you're always, you're always a Marine. I'm, still a mechanic i still have the skill set a lot of the doing brakes is still doing brakes they, they really haven't changed the systems 
up since then, so I'm still capable of doing a brake job, changing a water pump, you know, fixing basic stuff, um, you know. But I'm I'm actually a truck driver now. I, I drive a dump truck for an asphalt company in Wisconsin. That's what I do. Uh, I used to be a, a, in in the computer industry. I had uh, I had a couple of jobs where we had some. Uh, government contracts. I went into schools, refurbished, and fixed computers. I mean, I've I've done a lot of different things in my life, and right now, the truck driving is paying the best, so that's what I'm doing. If it sits here and declines, or we get all get replaced by automated self-driving trucks, I'll move on to the next thing. That's the nice thing I like about being adaptable and having a a, a very large skill set. Does anyone in the chat have any questions for Eric? Oh, I think I was looking up the wrong name because I, I was looking up your name. I thought it was you talking. I didn't even see the guy's name, but I read off the list of the names, so I, I couldn't have deleted or I couldn't have unbanned him anyways because I thought it was you. I think at one point I was banned on your channel, but it was a long time ago. It was it was probably at least a month ago. Well, like like I said, I just you know. I, I'd never done it before. I was letting my moderators kind of do whatever they wanted to do. And they were doing what I, I'm assuming other people had told them to do. And I just said, you know, I mean, if somebody wants to make a comment, it's in Nightbot. You don't have to fight with somebody. And I think I use the word trolls, whatever. But you don't have to fight with somebody if you just don't agree with their opinion. Just let them be, you know. Whatever, they make their opinion, opinion you read it, okay, it can go bye bye. You know, not everybody's going to share the same opinion and, you know, have the same viewpoints. And if somebody wants to come into my chat and say something that we don't agree with, we don't have to respond to it. Right. And I just wish everyone else had that viewpoint. Um, I've been blocked on every single live streamer at every single convoy. Um, it's it's crazy. I, they believe in free speech. It started with Oreo and then it just snowballed from there. But um, at this point, I have to either change my name or wait a while for it to kind of, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a streamer, so I have no idea how it actually works on your end. Um, I have to go, if somebody gets blocked, um, unless I see it uh, right in the chat, that's the only way I can unblock somebody. But if it goes through and I don't see it, I have to actually get onto the web page on an actual laptop to unblock somebody. Unfortunately, the, the, the phone app, at least for Apple, uh, the uh, YouTube studio is a, a really sad thing on the limitations of what you can and cannot do. So it really takes, I have to bust out a, a laptop or a desktop computer to make real changes to the YouTube channel. Yeah, for instance, um, maybe a couple of hours ago, I was on Buffalo Man 11 and they're discussing the formula formula shortages and talking about women should breastfeed and kind of pushing that. And so I, I was just kind of putting some facts out there. And one lady said, newborn babies can drink cow's milk, which is absolutely ludicrous. And, okay. um, you know, says some of the, in the, her daddy in the 1930s, um, these people, and I'm not trying to lump you into it, but from what I can tell, it just seems they're a little bit on the slower side as far as life's concerned. And I just think that they're kind of stuck in this generational hole where they don't know how to dig themselves out of it. We're not in the 1930s. We've come a long way. And to just say silly things like that, that's the kind of nature of the beast of this convoy and the people that are now a part of it is they don't understand that we've all evolved. Um, and so I just simply said a fact about breastfeeding and formula and was kicked off. And that's how it's been with every single person. And, and what did, not to interrupt, I'm sorry, but what, what did you have to, what was your comment? Uh, my comment was simply that, you know, children, or newborn babies can't digest cow's milk. And that, then, that's all it was? And discussed formula being invented in 1842 and how the infantile death rate was, you know, usually around 50% before that time. And then I was, I was, I was timed out and then taken off and huh. it's been that way with everything. I, I would have looked at that as informative, uh, personally. I mean, 
I, I wasn't aware of it. I would probably verify the information, but you know, if somebody was sitting here and saying a comment like that, and it could potentially be risky uh, to an infant that, because a lot of people do hear things on online and believe it to be fact. Uh, I personally would have been fine with that statement because there you're doing a public service at that point, uh, informing people that, Hey, you know, this could be, be potentially bad for your child, you know, or at least go, or at least it's informative in the way of maybe you should sit here and look to see if, you know, talk to your doctor, talk to somebody that's a professional and verify that. Yeah. Cow's milk is bad for your kid. You know, Hey, wake up. You know? Absolutely. That would be great. But unfortunately that's not the case. It I think with the C word um, and Trump and his advice, I think has steered a lot of people that have become new Republicans that are a part of this convoy or convoys of the past has made them fearful of doctors, of, you know, regular doctors who are giving regular normal advice. They have become fearful. And so they don't talk to their doctors about anything now. Um, just for instance, that old guy that's there, it's, stuff like that Bryant. Being, yeah bryant and people being concerned about him and you know we're all adults and i think that's another thing that a lot of people have forgotten um you know with the in mods in general as well too the disrespectful be respect it's like we're all adults let's get over it what are we doing i think lola made a good point with just the way she was speaking you know we're all adults we're not here to pat each other on the back you know um yeah. so that's my problem with the mods I apologize. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. That that was my only real problem. It sounded like you were at the end, and I, was, and I thought you stopped, and then I, I started, and then I realized you were still talking, so I stopped. Um, that yeah, I mean, I'm fine with anybody saying whatever they have to say, and I'll listen, and either I'll agree or I'll disagree. Um, like I said, my only complaint was that she she cut me off and didn't know where I was going with that statement. She heard a key word and jumped on it. Uh, instead of waiting and then bringing it up or referring back to it. That, that was my only complaint to that whole conversation was like, you know, I felt like I was getting lectured to and I was trying to sit here and say that, you know, I kind of agree about that situation and, you know, explain a little bit more about it. And it was just, boom, you know, it's like, okay, well, you never got to hear my side of it. So, oh, well, you know. So at this point, Eric, do you believe in, in the movement? Do you believe in the cause still? Or have you been dissuaded? Have you been, you know, turned in a different direction? What are your thoughts now? Um, I think my actions speak, you know, volumes. I mean, you know, if I, if I, if I believed that it was going to accomplish what, I felt it was going to accomplish, I probably would stay. Um, obviously, I think that more work can be done, in my opinion, at the state level. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm going home. And the fact that there's lack of information, I, I've i made it very clear, I'm not going to be the person that's just going to blindly follow anybody or anything uh, without all the facts. You know, it's, you know, I don't care how charismatic uh, somebody is and how good of a speaker they are. If I don't know what the heck they, they plan on doing, I'm not going to lay down my life for you uh, just because you say to do so. You know what I'm saying? I want to know your plan. I want to know what the risk level is. I want to know, you know, am I actually going to put my life in danger and to what level? you're asking me to put my life in danger too before I commit to something, you know, I'm not going to blindly be like, oh yeah, go stand here. All of a sudden get shot in the chest. You know, I mean, that's just not how I'm going to do it. You know. Did you ever sit down with Santa and discuss with him what his, what his plans were? I mean, did he ever, just from what I've watched on live streams, I never really got like a clear context of what the, movement had turned into and what it was going to be besides the July 4th um, plan, if you will. But other than that, I just feel like a lot of people were donating money. A lot of people were donating things to do. So how, where, 
where did it go wrong as far as that's concerned with um you know driving around for hours it, there's just no structure is that was that one thing that led you to leave um now brian brazi marcus and mike mike had uh, gone to dc before uh, they were part of that truckers unity whatever thing that they had done like two years prior and they'd done it before um it, it just, it really wasn't that organized. Uh, that was really, I think that's, that was the thing that really took it down the most. Um, I think a lot of it was very, very seat by the pants. I, I don't think, I think they needed to have somebody that maybe had a little bit more, how do I put this? Um, experience with movements like this before involved you know somebody that was looking at things a little bit bigger picture you know uh playing chess instead of checkers um and i i really feel it was a very reactive type situation it was like okay well we're going to do this we're going to see what's going to happen but they didn't know what they were going to do once they saw what happened they weren't playing those other they weren't playing chess and I, I think that's where the problem really came in is that they would try something and then they would wait for the reaction and then they'd have to figure out what the heck to do next. You know, and I, go ahead. Just a moment. I'm um, reading the comments. I'm just seeing if there's any questions. That's fine. I mean, uh, and I, I think that's, that's a lot where the problem kind of came in is, is, is it just wasn't very well planned out. It, it didn't see, at least from my perspective, that's that's what it was. I can't say that I was in every, I wasn't in the meetings. I don't know what their conversations are. These are these are 100% just my outward opinions from the little bit of information that I was privy to and kind of seeing how things were on playing, uh, or were playing out on the ground. Um, you know, and that's just kind of how it was, you know, it seemed like it was very reactive type movement. And, uh, you know, I know that there was a plan that, um, and it, it's out there. So I, I mean, I can speak about it and it's all, you know, it's all over. So it's not that big of a deal, but when the movement, uh, was first in DC and first started going around the beltway and they reached the point that they were tip to tail, there was enough vehicles that were covering the entire beltway there was a plan to just stop, block the entire beltway and shut the keys off and just sit there. And they wouldn't have been directly in DC. So the DC police wouldn't have had anything to do. Um, but that decision uh, was overruled. And I, I'm not gonna go into who, who sat here and said not to do it, but uh, I know a few of the leaders are blaming that person for stopping that movement. And I don't know if that's, what really killed it, but I honestly do feel that that was, uh, uh, that's what a lot of people expected to have happen. And when that didn't happen and then nothing else happened afterwards, that was, I think the moment when the, when the movement really just died. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so, you know, we were talking about earlier how you were doing a lot of work for free. Somebody wants to know how you feel about the other people that were grifting, um, as far as, just, you know, live streamers that weren't necessarily a part of the movement, but were just more of observers or anybody well, in general. Well, my opinion of the live streamer, streamers, you know, when we're talking about Oreo, when we're talking about uh, Joe, uh, when we're talking about, uh, you know, the prof what, what, what air quote professional streamers are, I mean, they, this is their job, you know, uh, First responder was doing his thing out in California um, and had been doing it and that was his job. You know, uh, I believe Oreo has been doing a more of a political thing uh, where, you know, first responder was doing his first responder type thing. Um, but that's their job. You know, it, it's paid entertainment. So for them to sit here and say, okay, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a viewer funded thing 
if they sit there and they tell their viewers, if Joe were to blow a motor in his car, and he's and he's been very clear from day one, he's a viewer channeled, uh, viewer sponsored uh, uh, streamer, and his viewers want to pay to fix his car. I, I don't see that as grifting because that's more like somebody paying for HBO. You know, they want to watch that entertainment. And he sits here and says, well, I can't do this, this anymore, this entertainment for you because my car broke, you know, and people want to donate to him. They kind of know what they're getting into. Now, when you're sitting here and you're talking more about some of the streamers that kind of started like me, you know, and I, I, I think I probably know who you're talking about. That's a different story. Uh, I, you know, I mean, to each their own. I mean... I, you know, I think everybody clearly knows that I wasn't one of those streamers out there right. that I was asking all the time. Uh, I mean, I am trying to figure out a way to tastefully uh, accept donations, either through merch or something to possibly fund uh, builds, you know, like kind of like the air horn. Uh, some of my viewers want me to build like a potato cannon. They want to see me do creative shit for content. Right. And, uh, you know, I want to try to figure out a, a way that doesn't seem like grifting, you know, that's just more helps me build content for viewership. You know? Right. And everybody has the right to spend their money how they want. I think what happened was, though, is that um, this movement has attracted a lot of senior citizens. And with that can come a lot of scams. Um, my grandparents have been scammed before, and I'm sure a lot of other people's grandparents or parents have as well. Um, and so I think especially with a couple, um, I won't name them, but um, I think they they saw an opportunity and ran with it. And to say that those people still are maintaining the viewership that they had before this would be naive because the people who were watching, whomever was watching before, isn't watching now. It's a completely different, it's either, you know, quote unquote trolls, people that don't agree, um, or people that do agree. And I would say majority of them are 65 plus and are probably are on a, an extremely fixed income. And to, no, to go ahead and keep talking, but I'm going to show to, you something. Um, keep talking. To, um, to kind of take advantage of those people is, I think, where a lot of the grifting comments have come from. And, and I agree with you. I, I do think, I, do, I know that there was bad actors. Um, and people that, you know, are not there, weren't there for the right reasons. You know, so I fully, I fully get where you're, where you're coming from, but I agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, if you just look at my audience, you know, it's the same, it's the same thing. And that's pretty much, uh, what I've seen mirrored on pretty much anybody because you know we'll play around and i'm like you know hey so how's your and this the, you're right you're right it, you can tell just by looking at my and my audience that a lot of a lot of the viewers are older people it's just you know i don't know if that's because the younger viewers just don't care you know and whatnot but i i, I will agree with that statement you know 35.3 percent are 55 to 64 years old you know so, I mean, I agree with that statement. I agree there are some people that got into it uh, because they saw the opportunity. And I'll, I'll I'll put it right out there. Patriot Mechanic. I will put that the fuck out there. I am, I am so glad that his stupidity didn't kill somebody. But I guarantee 100% that he saw that I had that cash app set up. And he heard about the no donations, and he found out that Saznak donated three thousand dollars, and they were hardcore hitting uh, for Absolutely. donations on their channel. And I will tell you right to this day, because I don't give a fuck about that guy, because he, he, you know, he's gonna kill somebody, mm -hmm. you know, if and you know, but uh, and I'm just glad he did. You know, I Absolutely. mean, there were a lot of things that, that he tried to do. Okay. For all the mechanics or any anybody, anybody can pretty much understand this concept really simple. A two-inch ball on a on a hitch behind your vehicle is only rated, and it says it right on top of the ball, 6,000 pounds of towing capacity. 
the dolly doesn't even matter doesn't even matter it has a two inch uh uh hookup to a two inch ball this man wanted to put freedom ford's 10 12 000 pound truck on it one freedom ford's axle is too wide to get on the dolly in the first place but two i mean that thing weighs too much but he was okay with it and then when the ambulance broke down he wanted to put a 14 000 pound vehicle in the mountains on a dolly and tow it up and down mountain hills with a six thousand pound ball go ahead uh somebody else asked um now knowing everything that you know now do you think that they're going to be able to accomplish what they they've set out to do I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, you know, it was it was a major blow when the TPC fell apart and they had to rebuild. Um, people are still interested. People are still following them. You know, donations are coming in. You know, I was really rooting for this Texas convoy, honestly. You know, I really thought that, you know, even though we've all figured out it's a lie, um, it didn't have any of the, how do I, how do I want, how do I want to word this? Um, it was clean. It was a clean convoy. It didn't have any elements of TPC. It didn't have any uh, of some of the stuff that people didn't like about AFC. It's a, you know, it's a convoy coming out of, you know, woohoo, Texas, you know. So I was actually really rooting for that and kind of hoping that that was going to turn into something that's something that somebody could have, uh, that, that people would have followed. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to keep my eyes open and see what happens. Uh, I think it's going to take them some time. If something's going to happen, you know, it's going to take some time. But, you know, I keep on sitting here and saying, if you know, if everybody wants to see what the heck they're going to do, show up. I mean, the easiest way to call is bluff. A lot of people are sitting here and saying, oh, well, even if Santa gets his people that they're not going to go into D.C., it's all a grift. It's all that. 3,000 people show up, call his bluff. That, that's what I have to say. If 3,000 people show up and he doesn't do anything, well, guess what? There's your answer. It was a grift. You know, if they go into D.C. and something gets accomplished, well, then then it wasn't. You know, I, you know, I just, it's too new. There's just not enough people. I don't know if they're going to be able to excite enough people to want to follow them in a timely manner. You know, that that's the problem. Is it just, it's dragging on so long that you may get one or two people to show up, but we have jobs, you know, we've got to go back to work. We've got bills to pay. People can't just sit there for months and months and months on end. You know, if, if they're going to do something, they have to get people to show up and they need to do it now and not have this be, you know, six months long thing. Cause right. American people can't do that. They've got to do that. Yeah. Somebody was asking what um, what enticed you to to join them in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> really, what it what it came down to was, um, like I said, I I was never overly confident in the movement, um, but it was an organization of people that were trying to do something. You know, I didn't fully understand the. Emergency Powers Act. I listened to what they said. I, I think I've got a better understanding of what they were trying to accomplish. Um, I don't think it's they were trying to get rid of the Emergency Powers Act. I think they more so were trying to end the what they feel is the abuse of the Emergency Powers Act. Um, and that's kind of my understanding of what they're trying to accomplish. Um, but really, it was just more it was the only game in town that was trying to do something. I mean, I feel the country's broke. I feel that real change needs to start to happen. Um, I mean, if 
a Democratic group was trying to get rid of people, you know, in Congress and, you know, empty the swamp, because I believe you guys feel that, you know, there shouldn't be these career, some of you feel that there shouldn't be these career politicians. And like even you said, you know, maybe having something where somebody has to be 30 to be a, a congressman or whatever might not be the bad idea. I may follow them, too. It right. Would, we have term limits for president. So why don't we have term limits for everything else? I, yeah. I, I agree with that as well. I just think the approach, on unfortunately, it was just it was wrong. So, I mean, so, I mean, honestly, I think just to finish it up is I just think that right now they were the only ones that were doing something is, is the reason that motivated me to try to do something. I thought maybe it had enough traction because I saw how big Ottawa was. I was kind of hoping I was actually very disappointed with the, uh, the numbers coming all the way across the country. I mean, Ottawa had tractors and farmers and Amish. And I mean, it was, a, you know, construction equipment. I mean, Canada really came out. And I, I will honestly say I was really disappointed. But I mean, I, I do understand, like I said, you know, people have jobs. They can't just leave. But I was honestly really disappointed with the with the turnout. I, I really kind of was expecting it to be a lot bigger than it ever than it ended up being. Right. I mean, you can show all you want, but if nothing's accomplished, then it's all for naught. A lot of people are saying in the comments, you know, nothing really happened. Nothing transpired in Canada after that. Nothing good for, for what their cause was. Yeah. And, and that's partially why I was OK with them kind of not going in to D.C. and just parking, because in a sense, that was a, a all in maneuver. And it lasted 21 days and they were out, you know, I think to a point, you know, tiptoeing in the way they did a little bit wasn't the worst idea because it, you know, it wasn't over in just 21 days. You know, they were, they gave the, whoever might've been listening a chance to try to do something, you know, to negotiate, talk, whatever. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say who told me this, but I kind of agree with this. Um, and it, it's somebody very famous, uh, uh, not somebody that's uh, an organizer. But this person sat here and said that he really felt that when we took Ted Cruz down to D.C., that's the point in time that the convoy should have declared victory and sat here and said okay we're going home we're going back to work you guys need to sit here and think about it you know and do something or we're just going to be back because at that point we we had ted cruz out there we we we'd been you know gray wolf and all of them had been in the in the building you know and had the meetings and that was kind of a high point of the of the convoy and that's where they really should have just left it on a high end and said okay well, you guys need to get to work or we're going to be back and then regroup if they had to at that point. Have you ever been drawn to anything like this before Trump was in office? No, I've never even been to a Trump rally. Okay. So, so your motivation wasn't really related to Trump. It was more about the emergency powers. Uh, no, like I said, I didn't fully understand the emergency powers. My motivation was I felt that there, that, the country is strayed and is broken and really somebody needed to do something. And this was just something. Well, what do you feel is broken? Um, the fact that Democrats and Republicans can't sit here and see eye to eye on anything. Nothing really happens in government, uh, party division. Um, the fact that, uh, that our leaders can be bought by, you know, outside forces by whoever can get them the most con uh, uh, contribution donations, stuff like that. Uh, the fact that, you know, people uh, are career politicians coming right out of college with no life experience. The fact that there's uh, there are no term limits, so people sit here and struggle to. They're more willing to sit here and do backroom deals 
to stay in office because that is their career, that is their life, than to actually do what the country needs them to do. Uh, you know, the fact that we can't be confident in our vote, whether or not it was when the Democrats felt that they were robbed when the Republican won versus the, the Republicans feeling they were robbed when Biden won. I mean, you know, I mean, everything. I mean, there's just so much that just seems to be wrong with this country. And I truly don't think that this is what the founding fathers wanted for us. You know, I think a lot of our rights are, are, are being trying to be stripped away. Uh, I think I do think that the government is getting too involved in our day to day life. You know, you know. Is this yeah. all correlated to, to, to the C word, if you will? Is this all, all your feelings on that correlated to that? It didn't well, what, really affect me. What specific rights have you had that have been taken away from you? Um, I don't know if I want to get into that. Um, I, you know, when we're talking about the rights, I, I don't think that's where, where I was going. I was going that I think that the way the government's being run was more my driving factor than rights being taken away. I, I know that there's a lot of stuff that's trying to be taken away, you know, like the right to, own, to bear arms, things like that. Um, I, I don't agree with that. Um, but that's a conversation for another topic. And, you know, I think, I think we were talking more about, you know, what was my motivation to be here. And my motivation more to be here was based on, I just don't think the government's being run right. And I think there's a lot of corruption in the government and how policies and laws are being done. And that, you know, that's really more what it was. It wasn't really, my motivation for being here wasn't about any rights that I've lost or, or any rights that I thought I lost or anything like that. I think it was more that I just think that the government, the way it's run, the way that we can get our, our politicians are getting bought and paid off uh, was more of my, my driving factor. So you have an issue with both Democrats and Republicans. It's not necessarily one or the other. It's just politicians in general. Oh, I'm an equal opportunity hater. As far as the, as far as I just saw somebody saying who's taking away your guns, you know, as far as the gun control is concerned, I'm a gun owner. I'm from Texas, um, but I own a handgun for personal protection in my home. I don't take it out. We here can carry a gun without a license wherever we want. Um, of course, it, unless a business tells you to leave. Um, and, and I choose not to because I don't feel the need to. Um, but in my home, of course, it's a different story. Uh, but what are your thoughts on that? You know, they're as far as do you honestly think that they're going to take away every single American's gun? Um, I think there's a desire to. Um, and unfortunately, you know, if you look at. OK, this is how my brain works. So I'm going to explain this. OK, I'll read a lot of information. And at the time, I will know all the factual points. So if you sit here and you ask me, what instance are you talking about? Um, I'm not going to remember, but I'll remember that I read this and I'll be like, and at the time I, I read it, I verified it, whatnot. And I remember the cliff note of it. Okay. So when I say this statement uh, and you sit here and say, what was that? I'm going to be like, I don't remember. That's just not how my brain works. I remember that I read about this statement and that this happened and this is what I took away from it. Um, I know that there's other countries that have taken away the guns and uh, it has gone very badly for them. Um, Which country? And, Which country do you believe has gone bad? Um, what was it? Um, 
Now I got to research it. I thought it was. I'd have to re research it. Like I said, I could have swore, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was, uh, it was something, it might have been Stalin, it might have been Hitler, it might have been one of those type of regimes where they came and rounded up all the weapons um, and basically made it so that their citizens couldn't uh, defend themselves against them and then they got slaughtered. I, I think it was probably one of those things. I'd have to re-research it. So during a time of war? Well, during, yeah. During a world war? Yeah, probably. That's pro I, I'd have to double check. Like, have I said, you I have you researched any other countries as far as right now who have gun control laws? They don't allow guns and have less crime. Have you done any research on that? Have you listened to any other people's points of view besides the right? Um. I honestly, at this point in time, don't remember if I have, to be perfectly honest. I would highly suggest that. I'm not trying to change your, your point of view. Just It's nice it's to hard. broaden the spectrum. But I would, no. I would highly recommend just researching what gun control has done in other countries and, and how successful it really has been. I mean, there's going to be murderers. There's going to be people everywhere that want to kill. And they're going to find whatever device is yeah. in, their, in, their, in their hands, um, what they're able to to obtain that's just the that's the reality of the situation so i think what democrats are or what people who are for some type of gun control is that they're trying to take weapons that have huge magazines and capacity to kill many people out of unfortunately for people who want to have those guns out of everybody's hands criminals are still going to get a hold of them but for instance the the child who killed many children in uvalde he wasn't a criminal he wasn't flagged. He's never been to a mental institution um, and been flagged for that and was able to obtain two assault rifles in you know close proximity to each other in a couple of days span, but was able to get one immediately. And that's where they're trying to, and I fully support um, lengthening a background check. It That's absolutely needs to happen. And if that's the little bit that's going to help, I don't see the problem in it. You know, and, and to a point, I agree with some of these statements. I I feel that, uh, you know, a lot of the criminals uh, get their guns from stealing them from other people. Um, I can see both sides of the argument. You know, I mean, if you have a large gun collection, to a point, I feel you should be responsible for securing those weapons. And if they if your house gets broken into and those weapons get stolen i mean you have you have some culpability in that in that act because you didn't do you didn't have them in a gun safe maybe you know maybe they're just hanging on the wall but then on the other side too you know if you're using them for self-defense what's the point of having them in the safe because then you can't get to them when you need them so i mean you know it's it's a very tough argument you know and I, you know, again, I, I get where you're kind of, you're kind of going with some of this. Um, but in America, you know, one of the things that, you know, a lot of, and I, again, I'm not going to be able to reference where it was, but a lot of other countries don't really want to try to invade us. Uh, it's a troublemaker. Uh, a lot of the other countries don't really want to invade us because they know that America is so heavily armed. So part of the deterrent of, for other countries that kind of screw with us is the fact that they, they're, they're pretty understanding that America is not just going to sit here and lay down and take it. Um, right, that, but that's, that's I, I, I don't mean, to, us, I don't mean to interrupt you, Eric. I'm so wanna, sorry. I'm just going to go ahead. And I mean, that's really one of the things that kind of makes us a little different than some of the other countries is that we've always kind of had that. So mm -hmm. to strip it away, you know, makes it a little different of, an, of a situation where these other countries, I don't know if they ever, and I'll have to research it, if they ever were as big into guns as America was. Go ahead. Okay, and yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. Um, I think that our 
culture has gone a little bit crazy in regards to America, America, America. I mean, I'm, I love my country. Um, my father, I, I think I said this earlier, was in the military for 22 years. So I grew up in that type of environment. Um, but I highly recommend a documentary on YouTube. I'm not sure of the name, but if you look up Sweden and guns, um, you will see a documentary about the entire country. Um, they, I think it's around 80% of the um, citizens own a gun. They walk around with guns. They are, they are required to lock them up in their homes. Um, and their murder rate is practically zero. Yeah. So there is a way to do it. But to have this mentality, we're American, we're, that's got to, it's got to die down a little bit in the, the bravado sense of we're Americans and that's the way it's going to be. Because to have that mentality causes a lot of disdain and a lot of separation. Um, yeah. So I think that's where a lot of dissensions coming from too, in regards to guns. But you also have in those, in those countries, like a four, yes, have a national healthcare system where you don't really have that here in the United States. So that kind of is limiting with certain like red flag laws and all that kind of stuff and a better education system that we offer really in the United States in, in those four countries. So for instance, a country like Finland, the last I checked was number one in the world um, for education. Um, we're, we're not that high. Um, and then that's dependent on which state and where you're located at. So the more blue your state is, usually the better education that you get. Um, in, in comparison to the rest of the country. So, and then normally with other more red states, there's more more people likely to own guns and, and then obviously carrying them around and feeling like they're clean, clean Eastwood every day. So, I mean, that there, but you, you can't even do the stopping of the, of the gun sales of, of with, cause no one wants to do red flag laws, but red flag laws in the United States to, to stop the purchases of people who are mentally ill from getting their hands on them. You know, we, an 18 year old can't buy marijuana. An 18 year old cannot buy alcohol. An 18 year old cannot buy cigarettes, but that I can walk in depending on what fucking state I live in in person to air fucking 15 and go out and do a mass shooting a week later is absolute right. bullshit. Right, and I think they're trying, to, they're trying to relay that with, well, you can join the military at 18, but someone in the military is trained to use a gun. They're highly trained to use a gun. Um, that's why they go to boot camp. And then they do like they do in Japan, where you have to go and get retrained every year to own that gun. You know, so, for instance, in the military, I, I, I was in the military, but a lot of my family members were. Um, you don't keep a firearm in, 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 in your sleeping quarters. You go to the armory to get your firearm. You have to be retrained every year to get a firearm you know, with, with your sight and how to know it, how, how to work it in the process. Of it. It, it's garbage what we do in the United States. Um, I could be fine, but there's certain other mental illnesses that happen may, may happen later in your life and uh, certain like onsets. So a person, for instance, who's like bipolar, for instance, might have suffered from a little bit of bipolarism with a mania and depressions. But when they get older in life, that's much more exuberant and it happened. And those things are much more fluctuate. And, yeah. you know, there, there are people that that are fucked up in the United States and, and, oh, yeah. and, all, and all general. And, all, and then they. And they listen to news things that just feed into the propaganda, that feed into this negative thinking. And then they go out and they think the world's negative. So they feel like, okay, someone maybe cut me off in traffic, so I need to fucking shoot them. Right. Okay. Okay. But um, so how do, we, how do we solve the problem of not having weapons in the hands of people that are mentally unstable and, you know, whatnot, but then not infringe on the rights of the people that are stable, you know, that should be able to have that right, because that is what the country was founded on. You know, you, you want to make a fundamental change, and I'm going to let you answer. Um, I'm, you want to make a fundamental change to what this country was based on, you know, and, and because of a few bad actors that are doing bad things, you want to sit here and then say, well, guess what? This person did this. So, yeah, you can't have this. You know, I mean, that just doesn't that doesn't swing. You, It has to be if there's going to be some control. How do you find the balance of not changing a fundamental thing that the country was based on, uh, you know, but then still protect the citizens without affecting the ones that aren't 
aren't a threat because she's not a she's not a threat. She has a gun in her house. Should she have to give up that gun just because Joe Joe Bob or and I, I wasn't doing Joe Biden. I was just Joe something. You know, yeah. wasn't even referencing him. But you know, just does something stupid with a pistol. I mean, how is that fair to her? You know, for all we know, she's What's a single it? mom and that's her only only uh, form of defense. And go ahead. So it's, that's always the dilemma. It's the freedom versus security. You yeah. know, like we, we, we want to be, we want security. So like everyone wants this massive amount of freedom, you know, but we also have things like property loss. Um, but very much like in, in, in late ways that you're talking about within property of, of owning a gun ownership. Um, I think there probably should be some red flag loss. I think there should be retraining involved with some of these things because you have people who buy them when they're younger or they get them when their grandfather dies. Um, for instance, is there's more guns in the United States than, than there are people. Um, there's, I live in a very, very rural area. You know, my grandfather was a very big gun nut. You know, when they all die, you get like two or three of them and, and the fam- all the males get the two or three guns in the family. Mm-hmm. I own guns myself. Um, Maryland has different laws than they do in West Virginia. Um, you know, we have, you have to get a handgun license in Maryland, but I can buy a rifle um, same day. Um, yeah. Rifles are less likely to be used in gun violence versus handguns. Um, and then you also deal with the other thing of the gun that's used in the most mass, mass shootings are AR-15s. So back in the 1980s, um, you could buy assault rifles up, up until then. And then the Black Panther Party decided, hey, we're going to go buy guns. And then it became a bipartisan issue of, well, we're going to do an assault rifle ban um, because black people started owning them um, in comparison. So how, how do you how do you rule that? I mean, I think certain guns, I think an assault rifle ban be great. Um, I think why retraining, why do you but we also have the issue rifle? of state, states' rights. Sorry, Telescope. I mean, you're Eric, not hunting with it. Eric, why do you need an assault rifle? Why do you need you, one? Why do you need a high capacity rifle? What's the point? It's it's designed to kill. It's designed to kill multiple people at one time, or um, it's a military grade weapon. So that's what it's designed for. So why do you need it? Because because it's I, fun. I enjoy shooting it. Right, right. I enjoy I enjoy the use of having it. I enjoy not having to reload when I do target shooting. What if and, when you went target shooting, they had one available and ready for you to use to have fun with? Not the same. Not, it's not mine. You know, mine, mine is going to be tuned the way I want. It's going to be dialed in by me. I'm going to be the one that took care of it. it it's using somebody else's gun is like using somebody else's whatever. You know, it's not personalized. It's not going to shoot the same. It's not going to have the sights the same. And, you know, and then on top of it, too, you know, part of the reason that the, uh, you know, and you're going to sit here and say, you know, is that that's the checks and balances against our government, you know? I mean, technically we should all have nuclear bombs. <laughs> I mean Right, you know, but the Second Amendment doesn't ass, give you but, your right to own an assault rifle. It's right to bear arms, correct? Uh I right think that's another problem equal to any military force. Right. So is a bazooka okay to own? It should be. Interesting. I mean I so- you know, so here's, yeah, and it is, it is. If you have the right licenses, I mean, I mean, if somebody wants to own a bazooka and they are a responsible person, and we have some type of system in, in place that can make sure that that person isn't a nut job, uh, if somebody wants to own a bazooka just to own a bazooka, you know, it's 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 a weapon. You right. Know? So what's the system in place? What is your what is your idea of an ideal system? That's the problem. I don't right. know. Increase don't background know. checks. I mean, actual right. background checks here in Texas, you can go to a gun yeah. show and buy a gun without an ID. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not saying the system's Wait. perfect. I am not, I'm not sitting here and saying I'm not on the side of, Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. No, I, I agree. Um, but you know, everybody keeps forgetting that it's the trigger that somebody pulls and it's that person that pulls it. It's not the gun itself. You know, you can blame an assault rifle but in reality, most of, the, most of the gun violence isn't done by assault rifles, you know? I mean, the one occasion that comes up, you know... Right, but those that, one occasions, that, children are being killed. Multiple children. But mass are. You know, but 
mass shootings are caused by the number one the number one gun for for that is is an assault rifle. But with yes. with multiple well, an armor like rifle. rifle. With multiple okay, but there are other weapons that you can get high capacity mags for. I've got a I've got a drum barrel for a twenty two long rifle that in two minutes I can make fully automatic. It, so you're talking about magazine size. You're not talking about the gun. And trust me, a 22 long rifle fully auto is going to do some damage. You know, I mean, you know. So you can't sit here and just say, oh, it's this gun. You know, creative people will find a way if they want to find a way. You know, it's the magazine size you're more concerned about, not the gun. Right. You mean creative criminals. I think if you're a law, if you're a law-abiding citizen without any sort of mental defect, yeah. you should have no worries that anyone is going to be taking your gun because it is in our constitution, and we have amendments to our constitution. Well, I think, I think I don't think that the I don't think the Second Amendment is going to be taken away. I don't I, I don't think that right is ever going to be stripped of you as an American. It's a founding right that we were given by our founding fathers. But to sit here and to um, Constant, constantly deflect back to 1776 is damaging. We aren't in 1776. We're in 2022. It's a long time ago. So there has yeah. to be there has to be some some progression. There has to be growth, or we're just going to be the same people. And I don't necessarily yeah. think that we're the best people in the world because of the way we behave. We don't stand for each other. Uh, yeah, we, we don't. I why do you think I sat and stayed with the convoy when I felt like everybody was getting left behind? Yeah, they were all talking about you, Eric. They were talking about you getting new tools and where you were getting them from and where your money was coming from. They were talking about you on all different all different platforms. Yeah. You know, 99% of the tools that I have are tools I brought with me. Uh, the only real tools that I bought were when we were trying, when uh, Dennis and uh minnesota mike and andy uh were helping to try to do um a uh, little big rig's truck and we were trying not to tear her whole engine apart because all we had to do was get a hose clamp off uh we bought a couple of angled pliers i mean really the amount of tools that i ended up buying were, was not that large 99 percent of the tools i brought with me i already owned them you know, I drive, okay, all the bags of tools I have, I go mudding. That's my portable tool set for if something breaks on my mud trucks. So I already had them. I don't know. They were, they were talking for quite a while about that. I know. And that's the problem is, you know, people speculate and they don't come. They don't know. They, they're, they're just making speculations off of, Oh, well, blah, 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 with no information. And that's where the problem comes in, you know. And, you know, I mean, anybody that was boots on the ground, other than Patriot Mechanic, had no problems. They saw where the oil went. They saw where the coolant went. They saw where the brake fluid went, where the brake cleaner went. I mean, everybody was coming to me for supplies. Supplies cost money, right. you know. Everybody knows where the money went, you know, except for the one person that was like, Oh, do, do, do. And that was Patriot Mechanic. Nobody else gave a shit. Everybody knew they could see the money was going into the convoy. You know, that I was using it on vehicles. That this person needed quarter oil. Here you go. Here's a quarter oil. You know, I oh, mean. Yeah. Well, you throughout, know, the, throughout the process, I never thought you were a grifter. I, I saw you doing something for something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, these other people, I we can sit here all day long and say that they're. I mean, it's yeah. capitalism. So. They're, they're using everything to their advantage. But um, yeah, I just, I saw a lot of, a lot of that happen throughout the course of the, the time that this has been going on, where a lot of people had started to turn against each other and, and then started to kind of hide behind Christianity. And then it formed into this weird kind of what I can only describe as a cult. Um, I think it was one char somewhat charismatic person in Brian. And then when he left, it, was as though someone else was trying to take over. And now with Santa, um, I see zero charisma in him, but for some reason people are following him still. Um, but now it's more of just a religious cult. It, it's nothing more and nothing less to me. 
Yeah. Yeah, I you know, I I'm having a lot of struggles with my faith right now personally. So I mean, I'm not an uber religious person. You know, I I was raised Lutheran. Um, I don't believe 100 percent in Darwinism. Uh, I think there there's something that was involved. Is that God? I don't know. So I'm very. And I've, I've said this before, so this is no, no new information. Um, you know, I don't know if, you know, if religion is just, you know, anything that man does, he, he can tend to corrupt, you know, and I don't know if I believe that religion isn't a corruption of man, you know, there may have been some character some person back in the day and some opportunist decided to, you know, corrupt whatever God was, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that all that stuff out myself right now. Um, you know, if you believe in God and that's your belief, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of doing what the message is, is to get the word out, you know, you know, sit here and, you know, speak about it. They're doing what, you know, in the, in the talking about God and all that, they're doing what the religion tells them to do. That's above and beyond that is their ulterior motives. I can't speak to that. I, you know, like I said, I'm not involved. I really haven't been involved in that convoy ever because I've never, other than a few visits, been part of the 1776. When TPC left and broke up, I was back at the racetrack and when I got uncomfortable with some of the stuff going down at the racetrack and figured that there was potentially going to be some blowback on Lisa and, and, um, Chris young that, uh, I needed to get the hell out of there. And a guy had a pickup truck similar to mine and yeah, it wasn't safe to move it cause there was no way to secure it to the truck, but four miles was closer than 33. And I, I've never been part of the 1776, so I really don't have the information about all that. I, you know, other than, you know, and I've never been uber religious. So I, you know, other than the fact that I know they're supposed to sit here and spread the word of God and the whole nine yards. I mean, I, I can't really speak on it, you know, but I, I see what you're, what you're saying. And I, I, I have personally kind of gone wow, that's pretty thick. You know, it's, they've really been kind of hard on the religious point. And I agree, you know, that it's, it's in my opinion, it's okay to be religious. That's fine. Um, I've always respected people that didn't push their faith on me too much. You know, we can have a, we can have a conversation. You, I'll, I'll listen to what you're saying, you know, and, uh, you know, let me know that you believe in God. That's great. We can, you know, whatever. Um, but when it's, you know, on that kind of venue, I, it may be a little too much. I, I don't know. But again, I, I don't watch their lives, so I don't know how bad it's gotten. You know, I've seen at a couple of meetings, you know, they're, they're doing, it's sometimes it's getting more like a church service where they're singing like gospel songs. They had girls singing gospel songs. Um, you know, but that's about all I can really say about it. I mean, that's, that's their choice. Right. Well, what do you think about Santa's affiliation with the Proud Boys? Do you think that was wise of him to share that? It was going to come out better, better to be honest and then, then, then turn out being called a liar. You know, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, uh, I had a conversation with him way before he was, uh, in leadership or really super uber involved in the convoy. Uh, when I saw his shirt and, you know, somebody had told me he was a proud boy and I, I questioned him about it. And this was early on in Hagerstown because uh, I don't really know. I haven't done a lot of research on the proud boys. I've just heard some of the negative uh, uh, commentary, you know, just like Antifa gets, you know, the proud boys got, you know, you know, each group sits here and says something, you know, they say something bad about Antifa, you know, uh, or the right says bad things about Antifa and the left says bad things about the proud boys. And that's the distinction I'm using here. Um, so I asked him about it. And he, you know, he 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 uh, affirmed 
that there are some bad actors in the Proud Boy area, but that's not his ex explanation is that's not the core Proud Boy. So there's so supposedly there's there are branches of the Proud Boy that are radicalized and that he's not part of those groups. He's part of the traditional Proud Boys, you know, not the radicalized Proud Boys. And he doesn't agree with it. And that was his explanation to me. And I never really got into it too more you know, or too much more than that. You know, but we had a conversation and, you know, I mean, at the time that I talked to him, he seemed down to earth. Uh, I mean, every time I've had a conversation with him, you know, in the past, he always seemed down to earth and seemed like a smart gentleman. Uh, you know, so, but I don't talk to him much anymore. He, you know, like I said, I asked him about the plans and he wouldn't share them with me. You know, ever since I've started talking to Telegram, I guess, uh, they, they think I, I'm trying to get information out of the 1776 for nefarious reasons. I'm going home. What the hell do I care? Yeah, me talking to Telegram has hurt me. It's all your fault, Telegram. I've damaged my image with 1776 because I talked to you. Thank you guys for letting me be on. I'm going to so, head. I don't, I don't want to jump back into an old thing, but... The telescope. Sorry, Telescope. Telescope. <laughs> well, she said she was leaving, so I was waving bye. Okay, so... Well, I know you, were, you, you guys were just talking about... It's all good. You, you, you're you're, you're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up and you're glitchy. Can't hear you. Hello, hi, bye, ciao. <laughs> so that's the one thing I've also wanted to bring up too about where. Got to fix your internet. Yeah, it's You're my internet. Out. The power just came, went out, and just came back on. Can't hear oh. me at all. E e I can hear you sometimes, can you hear but me then all? I, I just see your lips move too. It's coming back up. It just the power went out and just come back on, storming. I'm watching the chat, by the way, guys, because you know, uh, <laughs> telescope can't sit here and see how to get his internet working. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. It, it's when you're talking consistently that you know you break in and out. And, you know, can you hear me now? Yes, usually I can hear you, but then as you're talking and talking, it just breaks up. Like right now, you're frozen. Should be coming on here in a minute. All right. Okay. Holy crap. I was way Just, behind um, in the chat. Answer some questions from the chat, and then I'll wait for the internet to come back up. I want to go get some cigarettes. I, haven't, I ran out of cigarettes, and you were smoking in front of me. Uh, I don't have any Valium. It's 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm just tired. Well, come here, and I'll give you one. I'd rather have an Ambien. <laughs> cool. I've seen them turn missile silos into, like, condos and stuff. That'd be awesome to have that in your backyard. One second, let's see. Um, my understanding is he has some back problems, and if his doctor feels that he, he has a medical... So, hold on, hold on, I'm answering a question. Um, if he feels that he has a medical reason and a doctor uh, signed off on it, okay. then he should be able to have a, uh, a medical placard. I, you know, it's none of our business what his medical conditions are, you know, because of HIPAA. Yeah, you know, we don't know the full story. So yeah, if a doctor says that he should have one, he should have one. Go ahead. Uh, you're still breaking out. Well, thank you, Scott. Uh, Twenty-three. 
I'm waiting for my internet to move back up. That's fine. That's fine. We got time. I just I can re- I can read. I may not be the fastest reader, which we've all learned, but I can read. And I'm not afraid of big. Well, some big words I am. If I haven't seen him in a while, I might go. What the hell is that word? Um. Honestly, I don't know. You know, I I really would hope he wouldn't have. I did. He, in my, I, I feel that I'm a really good judge of character, um, and I just, he doesn't give off that vibe to me knowing him in person, so I would have a really hard time believing he did that. Um, I can see the argument, you know, what people are saying, but I mean, if it was on cam, I'd like, I'd love to see the cam footage, and I'd love to see it vindicate him. Um, I see where the the skepticism could be, and I could see how you guys could sit here and say that that would benefit him or possibly benefit the movement. But really, I just... I just don't see him doing it. You know? I just don't. Like the question. Do so, you can you hear me now? Uh, for the moment, but your video is still breaking up. Just give it. Go to the chat. Well, I'm in the chat. I'm reading the chat. Um, why does Eric think that everyone on the internet thinks he did it then? I don't believe that everybody on the internet does think he did it, but I'm not on the internet enough in general looking at everything and all the comments. I mean, I try. I tried being in Doe's chat until he burned me. You know, I'm here now talking to you guys. I go on Fry. I go on... Uh, Tommy, Tommy temper, you know, but I don't have time to be live streaming and interacting with you guys and see everything you guys see. So when you make that statement, I can't verify, you know, that's unverifiable information when you say that everybody on the internet believes that that, that happened, you know, I mean, I, from that statement, you believe that it happened, but I can't verify that that's what everybody's saying so because i don't have the time to well if they're repairing his car then he didn't do a good enough job because it you know if he was really going to do it he would have like firebombed it you know then they couldn't have rebuilt the car and then he would have gotten a new car uh supposedly he only did enough damage uh that it still repairable so he's not really getting a new car and that that's that kind of makes that not a working point because you know you know he's not getting a new car as far as i know uh convoy violence in dc i i didn't ever went into dc with the convoy so i don't know anything about convoy D, uh, violence he thought it was a payday. Well, he would have had to do a lot more damage. It was all superficial damage. I mean, you know, anybody could have told him that that wouldn't have been uh, a full write-off. Uh, I, I would have to go to the store, but, you know... You know, anybody that's looked up where we are knows that it's like a two-minute drive over there. I'm just... I'm trying to interact with you guys. I, I like interacting with people. Um, it's not an ego stroke or anything like that. I just, you know, you guys have questions. I may be able to answer them. I, I don't have a problem doing that. You know, I'd like to try to get the story straight. Um, I have no idea, uh, Nova, if he does or he doesn't. I haven't been around 
him since the t well i wasn't even me and oreo never were close in the first place i mean i've had a couple interactions but nothing like i've had interactions like with joe or some of the other streamers uh he's always been a little uh busy doing other things so i just really haven't had the uh the interaction that uh he had Um, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, uh, uh, big rig Patriot. I wouldn't know if the people are armed or not. I know there was a couple, uh, here and there, but I wouldn't, you know, if there's people that have them, I, do I personally feel in my opinion that there's probably some people out that are armed and that quite a few of them are? Yeah, probably. But do I know? No, I don't know. I guess that's the best way to answer that. Oh, Scout23, you're, so, you're such a troll with that comment. This cigarette is so good. You know, I'm just going to leave and go get a pack of cigarettes. Eric, you're fantastic. So... You hear me? Am I? No, you're still bad. No, I'm still bad. Okay, I want to try something real quick. Um, behind the mirror, want to know what kind of mud truck I have, and uh, it'll just be easier to show you guys a picture. So I, I'll pull a picture up real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, ch -ch -ch albums. Favorites, favorites, and um, uh, so those are my mud trucks. Uh, the green one is a uh, nineteen seventy three. K30 uh, with a 454 big block turbo 400 two wheel drive transmission going into a divorce 205 transfer case with a uh, with Rockwell two and a half ton uh, deuce and a half uh, military truck axles on 44 inch boggers and then uh, then I've got the Jeep that me and my daughter built and a wheeler and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much stock. It's got a four inch lift on it, uh, a locker in the front. So those are my mud trucks. Um, let me get back into chat. I mean, I can show you a video real quick of it going. Aaron, give me one second. I don't know how the audio is gonna work for you, but. That was just playing around in some water. So, but I actually, I enjoy it. It's just a hobby. I don't spend a lot of money on it. It's all overbuilt. So it doesn't usually break very often. Where a lot of guys will, I've always believed in having something stronger than what you need. So you don't, so it doesn't break a lot. All right. So let me catch up on the chat. I would have believed it would have been caught on hotel cameras. I haven't heard anything about the video surfacing. I would have thought so. Grab a camera and chat and walk. <laughs> walk and get smokes. Yeah, I suppose I could. I've got. To, I'm gonna have to charge my gimbal. I've had you guys on a charger. Uh, gimbal's gimbal's about to die. <laughs> I got to put you guys on a charger for the gimbal. The gimbal's actually about to crap out. We've been on here so long. Uh, 
It's okay, I'll save you guys. I'm not going to let you die. Come on, get out of there. You guys have been saved. You have power. You have your life force. Eric, what are your thoughts on Lizzie? Um, I've said it before. I mean, if he's working as an investor, an investigative journalist, and that's that's the what he's doing. I mean, the question is, is what's you know when do when do you stop? You know, I, I don't know. I'm not an investigative journalist. You know, they've got to do what they got to do to get the story. And, um, you know, that's between him and whatever laws, you know, either he did or didn't break, I, I, you know, or whatever the case. I mean, that's that's his conscience and what he did. I, you know, I personally haven't seen the video to see where what has happened. I uh, People have come into my chat and asked me that question. Um, but I'm coming from a point of, I haven't seen it, so I don't know exactly what he did. Um, I don't know if, if I would feel that he went too far because I, I just haven't taken the time to watch the video. So really it's kind of a naive, naive answer, um, because I don't have all the facts. Um, my understanding is, uh, this is to, uh, uh, Mick Crotch. I, I'm not sure what your first name is. My eyes are starting to lose focus. Uh, when, uh, when my eyes get tired, I start to, uh, have more trouble, uh, reading the smaller screen. Um, most truckers can carry guns unless they're not allowed. Um, and that's only if they're not allowed by their company. And that's a company policy. That's not a, a law. Just go, Eric. I wasn't intimidated by you, uh, LOLO. Uh, it was just a matter of, you know, I, I gave you a chance to speak and, uh, you know, uh, when I was going to agree with you on some stuff, uh, I was still in the middle of talking. You just, uh, you heard a key word and didn't give me my due time to finish talking. You know, you can't have a conversation if somebody's stepping on the other person, you know, cause you didn't know where I was going. You assumed I was going somewhere else. And, uh, in actuality, you never gave me the chance to, even if you assumed it, you should have kind of let me go where I was going. Uh, to a point. But no, I'm not, uh, I'm not intimidated by, by you. Yeah, AV, I already just kind of talked about the whole Wizzy following them around town. Um, um, try and catch up in the chat. Sorry, guys. Need to mount a 50 cal uh, gun on a truck, on that truck. Ha! <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a mudding vehicle. I, I'd hate to have that, like, fall off into the mud. It's just, it's fun. I, I'd rather be doing trail riding, but in Wisconsin, there just is no trail riding. So I'd, I'd actually enjoy doing trail riding. The problem is, is that all the places to go trail riding are uh, just too far. You know, I can go mudding multiple places in Wisconsin that just, that's the motorsport entertainment that's available in my area. And I've chose to embrace it and I have a good time doing it, but I'd actually rather have enjoy the uh, doing trail riding. Uh, 
it's just not really available in Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, so Monday you're heading home. That's the, that's the plan, uh, me and Minnesota Mike. I, I just ordered a Wee Boost um, out of my own pocket. And, um, you know, your background's sounding better. I think you might have got your audio fixed this time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I ordered a Wee Boost. It'll be here on Friday. It's the RV version. Cost me about five hundred fifty dollars, you know, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to live stream all the way home and possibly. I'm not going to be taking that trailer back immediately. I'm going to do some repairs on it that need to be done from when the accident happened involving the mechanics trailer, and possibly see about uh, getting that winch installed, which we, I was going to have the welder do, uh, so that's going to need be a little time. It may be a month before I take it back to New Mexico. I'm not 100% sure. It might be two weeks. Um, we'll just have to see how that all plays out. But then I'll probably uh, stream that way too. And then hopefully the WeBoost uh, will help out. And actually, I think uh, Wizzy bought the wrong one. I think to save a buck, he bought the wrong one. Uh, the newer one actually supports 5G. I think he got the 4G one and all his phones are 5G. That's why I think he's having so many problems. So, can you hear me now? We're good? Yeah, I've been listening to your background, and I, it hasn't broken out, so I think you're fine now. Okay. So, what I want to bring up is what you guys were talking about earlier um, with the symbolism of Christianity in the movement. Okay? So, yeah. lately, this past few days, I've been dealing with um, doxing from a certain Christian streamer uh, that lives at one of the... Uh, places there and how like the streamers are carrying and their symbols of the movement in themselves so very much they there, there's advocation promotion of christian morality involved with this movement um you know but it's very much that's very much not the case of what's being demonstrated from the symbolism of what's actually happening there um at, by, by any means you know, they, they could go on their streams and collect their donations and saying, Jesus is king, I love I love God. And then, you know, wants to, you know, have his moderators and to attack my fiance and, and, and try and try to get back to me, which I feel that's very much of a, of a, of a shortcoming of, of the movement. And it's literally like from what the TPC started as. Um, I went to Hagerstown and it was much more of a, um, I hate to call it a family friendly environment, but it was very much more of a, a very nice tailgate party. And now it's literally turned into paranoia and anxiety of people carrying of movements uh, through their streams um, and behaviors of their moderators and their wrenches. And I feel that like, if anything, that's, that, that's probably what's going to tear, tear down their, their entire movement that they're carrying right now. Um, as I've advocated from day one, like I'm not, I don't support the movement, but you have a right to have the movement. Um, I, I know you're, you're, you're kind of done and you're out. So like you, you could, you could really give a shit, honestly. But, uh, I think it's just something to take care of. I mean, it definitely perhaps going forward of it because there's no one there anymore. I um, in, in, all, in all honesty, um, Oreo and Wizzy and I think Polish is still around. I want to throw out another Santa, um, but besides that, there's there's no one really there. All right, I, Jody D. Boy, Eric, you should buy Oreo a six pack of root beer of A and W root beer and then cryy face. I, I don't get that. What 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 was that supposed to mean? Did I completely miss that? Is that like something that I'm just too old to understand? Yes. Okay, so so what, so fill me in, fill me in telescope. Seeing how you're the younger person that understands what that was supposed to be. Well, Is I think there's, there's always the joke that uh, Antifa leaves root beer, so oh. it's very much of that uh, regard, and oh. and popcorn and and eggs. Okay, all right, and uh, and uh, what else? <laughs> yeah. So, vroom, <laughs> vroom. No idea. 
it's not very funny if the person that you're saying it to doesn't understand the content. You know, it's like, it's funny to you guys. There's probably yeah. people rolling in the chat, go laughing their ass. Cause I was just like, well, what the hell does this statement mean? And yeah, yeah. That dumb mechanic didn't know what it uh, or, See, I'm giving uh, away, all, I'm giving away all of our secrets. Oh shit. So if I want to become a card carrier, I have to have eggs and root beer float all the time. Or well, I mean, a and W root beer. Uh, I mean, I drink PBRs, thing. so it's okay. Yeah, well, you know, you just got bad taste. <laughs> I don't know. You drink Corona all day long, so I, you know. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I'm not a big alcohol drinker at all, period. And mm -hmm. it's one of the few that I don't mind drinking. I'm not a big drinker. You know, mm -hmm. I just, it's one that I've tried and I don't mind drinking it. So that's what I drink, you know. I've had PBRs. I've had Bud Wiper. I've had, you know. Miller, I mean, I just, you know, if I'm going to drink, it's just kind of my go-to because it's not as harsh. And, you know, I like the lime flavor. That's just how they kind of serve it. It just is what it is. Uh, turn off your video, blah, blah, blah. Uh, can't think of any good questions to ask you, but uh, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you, uh, James, Jameson, son, sorry. I am bad with names. So, uh, Fireman17, like 1776 has turned nothing in, into more than a grifting and praying for God for more. I think at some point there's going to be half, there's going to have, for, for, for the movement to carry on, it's definitely going to have to transform and change into something else to be more inclusive. Um, definitely from seeing from the behaviors of how Lisa was treated uh, for, for counter protesting. Um, they, they accept me to go in um, and I'll give Santa credit for that. But uh, I, I don't, I think the issue of freedom, like what, what, what part of freedom? Cause it seems like there's an issue of, Oh, it's freedom for us to own guns. It's freedom for us to go drive around here or not take a vax. But you know, if you want to have an abortion or, I mean, especially what, what was demonstrated the other day of if you want to be transsexual, um, you're not going to be accepted. And I, and I feel that, that that's a shortcoming of what they're doing with the movement. Is this where I raise my hand to interrupt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can interrupt. Okay. There you um, go. Okay. I don't know the whole picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm speculating here, so don't crucify me because I haven't seen all the videos. I haven't seen all the interactions. Um, some of that vibe could have been that people knew that she came from that van. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have to, we do have to keep that in mind that people knew she got out of that van. So. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't, weren't people that are there that may have had an ins issue with people that are, are trans. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that. But I, I also want to put out there that people knew she was from that van. So mm -hmm. that could have been part of, of that situation. But like I said, I, haven't see, I didn't really see a lot of the interactions. I interacted with her only very briefly. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I was streaming and she was standing next to me. And I, I swear I remember... Uh, her and I, I, I apologize if I'm using her wrong uh, mm -hmm. uh, term. Um, I believe she identifies as a female. I, I don't know, um, but uh, I could have swore I've seen her at uh, at at Hagerstown before. So uh, back when we were originally there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't I, I don't think I've ever seen that MX flow, uh, but I I'm pretty confident I've seen I saw her once there before. And I'm all caught up on the chat because I it, it I was going to type in a response to something and it flushed me down to the bottom and I couldn't scroll back to where I was. So I'm looking at whatever comments you guys are stating now. So go ahead. Uh, back to what you were saying, Telescope. Yeah. So uh, you like from behaviors of what I've seen, you know, I, I haven't really had any issues until probably the last few days with anyone. Um and it makes me, it really does make me ponder and think, you know, like I said, like I go there. Um, I don't, I don't agree with it. 
but like what what's how how it's going to end what 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 how is everything going forward because you're watching a lot of power shift from i mean it, it's santa said from day one that he was a dictator of the movement uh that he ha- he was not going to run this as a democracy he was going to have a board of, of advisors and, and that's how it's going to be run he makes the, the final word comes to him but there's something symbolic of the streamers involved with the um the movement anymore of there's more focus on that rather than where it makes the people in charge a, more of a figurehead um, than anything else. I, I think part of the reason is, is that with the TPC, there were so many chiefs involved that yeah. so, so much stuff didn't get done. I think that's why he's doing this top down, like president runs the country thing. Go mm-hmm. ahead. I just wanted to point that out. No, actually, no, I agree with you. No, I think there's the issue of transparency. Um, I've even spoken to Santa. I said, yeah, I feel that he's been a little more transparent than what's happened in the TPC. Um, but there's still issues of leadership because um, especially the movement's not growing. Um, here's something I found interesting today was um, I was on I was on the nice little Twitter and like Santa and the 1776 movement only has about 300 and some change of followers. When you go to the rallies, it, it's it only it's only appealing to older conservative people that are very much of your um, your your Trumpist and all that kind of stuff. It's not appealing to to younger people. It's not appealing to anything. And if you have a social movement that doesn't appeal to young people, you're just going to die. It's going to it's going to die off. Um, yep. I'm just going to do one finger if I'm going to do a quick response to like a comment. So it doesn't okay. get too far away. And then I'll let you keep talking and I'll do a, this. If I just want to sit here and break in for two seconds, sure. I'll say something to you. So, um, Eric, do you think, uh, what do you think about Senator Johnson lying about term limits? I don't know anything about it. I have many will really follow politics too much because I've been too busy with other stuff. Go ahead. I'm looking at the chat right now. So, um, but yeah, you have a social movement. They're trying to rebuild a social movement that everyone gave all their money to. And they were all burned at the end of it. Um, I don't care what anyone says. Um, there's a missing million dollars. Um, the math just doesn't add up uh, to it at all. Yeah. There, there's speculation that it could be a lot more. I mean, a lot of people don't believe that there was only 1.9 million. Uh, yeah. I don't know because I had no, no contact or any information about the money. But, I mean, you know, I... <laughs> And then I, I guess uh, um, I was talking to somebody else that's a lot bigger into Bitcoin than I am. That's actually for the convoy. So this mm-hmm. isn't like a, uh, you know, somebody that's negative towards the convoy that's sitting here and saying, hey, whatever happened to all that Bitcoin? And, oh, they supposedly lost the password to get it to get access to the uh, wallet for the Bitcoin. Yeah. And how convenient is it? You know, people are only going to watch that Bitcoin for so long. And now, you know, five years, three years, four years down the road, all of a sudden it'll just disappear and you mm-hmm. won't know where it goes. Go ahead. And no one knows where that crypto donations are at, at all. And I agree with you. I base well, my ma- I base my math on the 1.9, what they promote. But I know there was definitely more. There was all those cash donations that was dropped off to that, um, the black bus and everything as well. They, they do know where the crypto is because uh, my understanding of how crypto works is you can actually see what's in that crypto wallet. You can't access it, but you can see how much mm-hmm. is there. So there, there are people that can actually track that the wallet that they use still has those funds in it. So once it goes somewhere else, you won't know. Uh, I, I get is my understanding, but they can literally look. You know, that's my understanding is you can look at that crypto wallet if you know how to to do mm-hmm. that in crypto. Yeah. And those funds are there, and they're saying they they've lost access to them. That that's you know, I don't so. I don't believe it. <laughs> I just, I just don't. I think, I think someone's going to get a nice payday out of this, or some people are getting nice paydays out of this. I don't know. Don't know enough, enough about it. I know, I know. You probably deserve the most money. So uh, you're the hardest no. working person in that convoy no. for the last four months. Oh yeah, you were. I, I volunteered, and that's what I, I. I am happy with the fact that. At some point in time, you know, I was hoping that this movement would have done more. It maybe would have made a bigger statement in, you know, in history. 
Um, I wasn't a glory hound. That's not what I was looking for. But I was perfectly happy with being able to tell my grandkids someday that, you know, I was involved in this movement, sure. you know, you know, just like anybody else that was involved in any other movement in the country, you know, that was able to sit here and say to their grandkids, you know, I would participate in this. And because of this, you have this right or you mm -hmm. know, this came to term, you know, and I, I would have been perfectly happy with that, you but, know. But what rights were, what was it really about carrying the movement on about? So. Very for much. me, for me, it wasn't really what the movement was about carrying on. It wasn't about the Emergency Powers Act. It wasn't mm -hmm. about that. This was a stepping board to what I felt were bigger issues. I figured by helping them do this, that that would have made them a force for change in the government. When I first started hearing about the Emergency Powers Act, and I think that's part of what's killing them too is not a lot of people understand what the heck they, they were trying to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was supposed to have a whole interview with Santa where he was going to really break it down and dumb it down to the, mm -hmm. to the lowest common denominator of what exactly they wanted. And that interview never ended up happening. Um, but for me, this was just everything they were doing was just a, I wanted to help them as a step, as a springboard, to maybe the next issue that I cared more about or that I understood more. If I helped empower them to be a, a force of change, when they dealt with this issue, they were going to move to another one, you know, and maybe that's the issue, you know, that, that I wanted to see changed more. I, you know, like I said, I feel that there's problems in this country. And I even said it to that uh, Lola or LOL, whatever uh, lady, uh, or no, I actually said it to the other lady, um, if there was a democratic movement that I felt was, you know, something that was going to make the country better, even if it's led by Democrats, you know, if it was something that I can agree with, you know, I, there's, there's a good chance I, I may follow that, you know, I'm not, I'm a very open-minded person, you know, like I said, if, you know, if I, I'm, I'm more concerned about just the way the country is going, you know, and that it just needs to get a lot of things need to get taken care of. I don't care who run, who starts a movement. These guys just happen to be the ones that were trying to get the ball rolling. But, so, so I actually have 1776's pamphlet here. Which one is that? The California one or the, uh, one the, new, or the Freedom Restoration Movement? Oh, oh, 1776. Okay, sorry. I thought I thought it was a TPC one at first. Go oh, no, 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 I don't have it. I don't have a TPC one. I have a 1776 one. I, th I think I have one of those around here too. I got to figure out where the hell it is. So I'm such a horrible person. So, so the mission statement that yeah. is that is written on here, uh, the 1776 restoration movement stands united to peacefully address our grievances and demand that our government restore the rule of law and in our constitutional rights. The fear of government becoming too powerful worried by the founders of this great nation. They had the foresight to include amendments to the Con United States Constitution that guarantee people's rights and provides sure well shortly that there's no um, future in US politician or president that can ever disregard or take them away. We the people have forgotten the real power we the people possess. To me, there's no mission statement here. It's it's fluff. There's nothing. There's nothing here. Like okay, when we would get we want to get mad, we want to just yell at our government and we want to peacefully assemble. Well, you already have that from the First Amendment. There's nothing. There's nothing on here. And in, and in, like with people arguing, well, you're not creating a movement because there's just nothing there. And so it seems to me is, and I don't want to be that a-hole, but just it seems to me like a lot of people just want to live in a parking lot and not go home and grift for money and use nice, great terms of Jesus and trucker and freedom and honk honk and give us some money. Oh, you can give us $400 to sing the fucking YMCA. But there's nothing there. Like, it, they're, they're, not doing, they're not doing trips. They're not doing anything. And I know you probably do agree with me at a certain point too. You're, you're leaving the movement. 
you're going home. You work you worked your ass off. But there's no mission. Yeah. I I mean part of the problem is part of the problem is, is that you know what do they do until they get the numbers? You know, they they I think that I think that's a lot of what the situation is, is that you know, the numbers aren't there to do a big scale let's go shut down DC type situation. So to a point, you know, they are, they, they're, they're, they're surviving till hopefully somebody decides to come do that, you know? So what should they be doing, you know, and still be relevant to try to grow the movement. And I think they're still trying to figure that out to me, to me. If I was running that movement, I would try to spread the word online because you need to get people there. That's absolutely deplorable. You have 300 fucking Twitter followers and you're going, hey, we're going to do this and build this movement to change the government. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Then I would also not do rallies four times a month in, in, in Bunker Hill because no one wants to fucking go there. I mean, it's the middle, it's the middle of nowhere. You're in the backwoods of a, fire, of, a, of a parking lot of the fireworks store. It's in the middle of nowhere. Like, I think, honestly, even though they dealt with counter-protesting going to smaller towns, that's what Santa needs to do is get out of Bunker Hill and maybe do once a month rallies at Bunker Hill and do small towns. And they're going to, yes, and they're going to deal with counter-protesting. But that, that's a hell of a lot better than what they're doing now. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it, it really bothers me that the more and more that I've gotten out into the public... And the more you guys have seen it, I have talked to people uh, streaming, uh, like when I went to DC, the, the biggest thing is that nobody knew about us. You know, how does this grow when people that aren't online can't find us, don't know anything about us? The news wouldn't report anything about the convoy or anything for the most part. So, you know, I'll be talking to somebody and I'm like, Oh yeah, I was with the uh, with the trucker convoy, you know, here in DC, and or or just the trucker convoy, and they automatically just assume Ottawa. And when I say no, the one here in the United States, they had, so many people had no clue that it even existed. You know, I mean, you know, there's a problem with uh, I think in society right now that that the news is impartial. You know, because good or bad of whatever the convoy was doing, you know, it still should have been newsworthy, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that it's, it was a media blackout to the point that nobody knew that we even existed for the most part well, is just is just that that's a problem. Well, that's yeah. that's that's from the Ukrainian war. You guys were going to go do the D.C. trip and then Ukrainian war broke out that weekend. Um, yeah, but. but then, but like I brought up before when I first got on here, it's the symbolism of the movement. Okay, trying to re, trying to build a movement. Well, guess what? You have you've gotten better since our conversation, and and so is so is wonderful Jeff Ellis. But um, you have you have people who get automatically blocked from these stream these streamers chats. Okay, but these streamers oh. are symbols of that. And now you have a streamer at 1776 that is openly doxing people online. Mm -hmm. That is fucking deplorable. And they, and they hide behind this Christian morality bullshit. This is like, listen, we might be an, a bunch of online trolls at, at, at BTM, but we, we, we don't dox. We don't, you don't attack people's family. I was there the day that, that, that Oreo's family was there. And I left him and his wife and his children and everything. I didn't even bother him that day. Mm. I went there and I spoke to you and I spoke to Wyckoff. You know, we all kind of, I had a beer and, and chill out. No, you, you got to say it right. It's whack off America. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know that you're mispronouncing it. Go ahead. But, but you also have streamers there. They're carrying that, that movement that are literally pushing people away. How the, why would you want to come live in a parking lot? I mean, 
at least Hagerstown was free to live in. You're paying five dollars a day to park your fucking car in a in a parking lot down near Santa. And then you have streamers going, well, you know, people we don't like, we dox. Um, I, I, I don't, mean, I don't understand it. And, and, and you argue, well, we we want Christian morality in the, in this country. Well, I know I, what the Bible says. I mean, I get, I get to a point, and I don't mean to cut you off. Do you, were you kind of done? Were you kind of? Yeah, done? yeah, I'm kind of done. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, you know, I don't agree with it, but I understand the reasoning behind what they're doing there. And then, if you look at it from a financial standpoint, you're probably better off. Um, now, okay, you're paying a hundred dollars a month to stay there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's just the way it is. Um, but more more likely than not, if they are going places, if they go places, you're getting more than a hundred dollars in fuel a month mm -hmm. from donations. So it's kind of a wash. You're kind of like paying for your own fuel or even getting a discounted fuel when in they, a sense. But when they want to go to D.C., I mean, how many but, times have they gone to D.C.? Like twice? I, Three times? That's, not, that's not even what I'm talking about. The, the whole purpose of it, and I don't agree with this, okay? that This is not something I agree with. I understand why they did it, is they felt a lot of, there were, there was a lot of people that were were in their terms, well, not not in their terms, but in taking advantage of the of the convoy that were just soaking resources, mm -hmm. uh, people that were homeless, people whatever, and that was their solution to to weed them out. You know, right. the people that they felt had nothing, you know, financially to be there weren't going to be able to pay that hundred dollars. And that was a way to weed out those, those people that were just soaking off the food and the gas and the whatever. But they weren't, because, buying, they weren't buying the food. They didn't buy the gas. All that was donations. Now every social, but it's still, ever, but it's still a resource that's being expended on something that somebody that may not go to DC and help support that, that, that thing in the end. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just yeah. saying I can I can understand the thinking process of why they did it. But Do you understand? Every, yeah, but every social movement, neither right right and left, okay, um, are going to draw in uh, places, especially if they have free rent, um, a homeless population. It, it, it's that's not it's not yeah. it's, it's neither here nor there. It happened. And this, Trump, it happened. It happened in Hagerstown. And this was their way of trying to weed that out. But the problem is, is a lot of these people haven't been home in four months and they haven't been employed. I'm sorry, you're fucking homeless. You're fucking unemployed. Like, and, and, and then, you know, you get criticisms and people are like, what? Because I bring it up to a lot of other people. I mean, they let me come there and let these have, have these conversations and stuff with you and, and Wizzy and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and Santa. And it's like the criticism I get from, I mean, the left thinks I'm a clinically insane for wanting to come there. Um, the right Which thing, is a problem. Yeah. And then the the right, <laughs> um, I, I well, well, lost my train of thought. I'll probably pick it up in thirty seconds. I've been drinking beer, um, but the, the the right is uh, thinks I'm a liar and I'm a grifter and trying to break, bear things out. But it, but the but these social movements are are of they, they always attract those kind of people. They they like I said, I've always been accepted there, but and I'm rambling. You, you go ahead. <laughs> What's my train? No, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just kind of catching up. I kind of uh, but, forgot about the chat. My phone was up there, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, I was. I was actually watching the chat. You know, but you, but you have a lot of people who were homeless. I mean, Jersey Jay, for instance, is homeless. Um, you know, like a lot of people down there are still are homeless that that are drawing in there. They're they're paying they're paying uh, their rent, I guess, so to speak. Maybe. Um, from uh from donations online um the money's particularly not going to the movement they're going to the people uh you have a person like oreo who's, who goes he'll be a symbol of the movement until something bad happens and then goes i'm not part of 1776 and i don't take money from them but he fucking lives at 1776 and promotes them and 
and well, does all their meetings. And, and he, it's he might be doing that now, but he originally was sharing Airbnbs with uh, and paying a portion with uh, the other streamers. So you do. <laughs> well, whip whip de do, but you got to factor. You know how many months were they doing that? You know, so maybe currently he's doing that. You know, but you can't sit here and say the whole time. I, it's it's all about, you know, new facts. I mean, you're right. Right now he's he's staying in his camper and he's on the property. But you mm -hmm. also have to point out that that wasn't always the situation for the entire time. This is a new development mm -hmm. that maybe is what, maybe it been a week that he's been right. doing this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's just when you say those things, you know, you generalize it, you make it sound like that he's been doing that the whole time. You gotta, you know, if you're going to make a statement like that, you can't be quite so general and say, yeah, for the last, you know, for the week, for now for a week and probably continuing on till X point, you know, whatever, go ahead. Because one of these people, like, really, I mean, besides karaoke night mm -hmm. and the donation jar at, at, at the rally, when, when, when are some of these people actually raising money for, for the movement? They're not. Um, they're raising money for themselves and lasting it till the end um, so they don't have so they can avoid their families and, and their children. Um, I mean, I couldn't imagine abandoning my, my fiance for, for four months. And my kids and going, hey, look, here's a picture of my kid. Uh, my donation links here. Hey, look at look at my kid. Donation links here. Hey, donation, donation, donation. Oh, how dare you tell me I don't interact with them? I'm here at the thing, but I'm telling you, oh, thank you for that ten dollars, Nancy. Oh, thank you. Yes, God bless. You know, freedom and truckers. And but. Hey. You know, when something rises up, I'm not part of 1776. I'm not part of 1776. Yeah. I'm not going to stop your train of thought. Yeah. You think you can keep this conversation up for five minutes while I go grab some cigarettes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you coming here? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come back. No, I, I, that corner by the gas station has uh -huh. really bad internet. It's just the cell service drops. So walking over there or driving over there, I'm going to lose you. Okay. So I'm better off just, you know, muting this temporarily, muting the camera and mic, walking or, or driving down there real quick and watch it. And I'll listen. I'll, I'll take my other phone and I'll listen to you. Um, and then just coming back. You Perfect. know, I just want to make sure, let you know, I'll be back. Yeah. Okay. I'm do, I'll do a Q&A. All right. Give me one second uh, to uh, get live down the stream. Okay. There we go. And I'll turn this down for a second. And then I'm going to. Mute my mic and turn. So what's going on, chat? Um, I guess I'm kind of married behind the mirror. Uh, we've been together for like five years. So, I mean, we share, we kind of share everything together. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're kind of married um, untraditionally. But uh, no. Is Patton going to jump on? I think he needs to. He gets some ox balls. On oh, my chest. Okay. Let me half naked. I'm like doing everything in reverse here. It's like a weird heart that says love, death, and resurrection. I haven't looked at the chat that much, uh, Disco. Sorry. Estimate and Oreo's income. Um, the internet did buying a van. I mean, unless they like committed a bunch of a uh, fraud on my um, fiance's account because he's so fucking broke. Um, you know, he ne he needs to get some tires and a fucking oil change. I don't fucking know. Come on, give me something good. Absolutely, Gar.
Absolutely, Obi. I spend all of my money on PBRs and uh, Marlboros. The cigarettes aren't cheap in Maryland. It's like $10 a pack. Maybe nine if I use my discount at uh, Sheets. Absolutely behind the mirror, poster child for abortions. What gun restriction laws would I support uh, that would impact our current ownership? So, like, I think it's very complicated because we have that 10th Amendment states' rights. So you have um, um, the, each state's going to make their own laws. Now, we need a federal law, but the problem is it's just not. We have a Supreme Court that people will appeal it to, and it probably won't um, abide by Um I mean, I would love, I would love like red flag laws with, um, you know, get, having to, you know, at least every year or two, every year or two, of uh, being recertified to go get keep your guns and everything. But uh, you just have states that are just not going to do it, and it's and it's sad and pathetic, and more lives are going to be lost. Um, like I said, you're not going to probably have red flag restriction laws until we have a national health care system. Uh, Jameson, um. I'm thinking they're going to go home. I, I, I think they're going to blow their steam out. I think there's nothing left. I mean, I think this isn't the joke about summer. Every uh, After 4th of July, kind of summer's over. He's just kind of winding down. So, I mean, they're just going to blow out their steam. Uh, I have a really good, I have a favorite um, uh, sour ale. I'll show it to you. Um, they only make it like, for like a month a year. And uh, I can't get it. So, like, this is my favorite sour. And after 4th of July, it's all gone. <laughs> so, because no one cares about America until presidential elections and the 4th of July. I need to get some of my beers out of the freezers. I have freezer beers. So yeah, I'm back. Let's see what's going on. What's what's going on, fireman? Um, I'll figure it out, fireman. Uh, I I'm gonna talk to Santa about it due to the ongoing issues I've had with with Oreo lately. Um, so I hear uh, Santa and I get along pretty well, so I I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Um, worst ones the worst. We could always do a Streamlabs on um on behind the mirror. I think he'd be pretty open to it. So he, I know he said he didn't want the um, questions beforehand, and he likes going he likes going off the cuff. Uh, Lolo, you're doing an awesome job. What's the pick on the freezer? Um, it's a uh, drawing of like a, my my fiance is really into art. I like art. Um, it was drawn by a schizophrenic guy. He does all these weird collages. So uh, we have him on the on our refrigerator. Uh, Patton, I don't think the federal government is too large at this time. Um, I think it probably should be bigger. Um, I would like, I said, like a national health care system, um, like a free college system. Uh, night disco. Um, Fireman, I, I do. I was actually planning on uh, talking about if the, um, if they're just a trucker Waco, Texas. So I was going to hit them with some, some social science and, uh, and discuss that and some incompatibilities with um, the Bible and the movement along with um, the symbolism of the movement with the streamers. So yeah, I was gonna go pretty hard on the questions. And I already, I already gave Santa a, a heads up about that too. And he said, that's fine.
Come on, anyone got anything good? Seems dead. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you guys can't shut up, and sometimes uh, it's too slow. I was, you know, honestly, Max Flair, I, I, I seldomly disagree with you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, art, it's a um, little Sour Me America. Um, it's really good. It tastes like rocket popsicles. Yeah, I will, John. Um, I think that was symbolic of, of, of the movement themselves. Um, you know, it's like we believe in Christian morality, but we ignore the teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, now, like I said, they do let me in there. Uh, so I, can, I, I always have to give them props on that. But at the same time, it's it's really symbolic of you could you could have like invited uh, Lisa on the stage and, and gave her a platform for at least for a few minutes to say what she had to say, and they didn't. Um, you know, Jesus hung out with prostitutes and thieves and and murderers and uh, and 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 they're kind of symbolically pushing that away, even though they accept you know certain crimes of criminals and uh, of in the organization. Uh, Pat, no, I haven't. I, I really never really followed the Canadian one besides knowing it was just up there. And they got their money taken from the government. I got into the movement from it being in Maryland, um, and it was right near my backyard. You good? I'm look, <laughs> I was I'm looking at the chat. See how long it would take you, take you <laughs> to realize I was back. I'm sitting here going, God, I am so bet I am so much better at following the chat. You just walk away and you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know me, I'm a quite animated guy. So yeah. uh, <laughs> question for you. Did I hear that you wanted uh free college and what was the other thing? You said two topics, right? Free college national, and something national health care system. National health care system. Now, I could be on board on that. The problem is, is how do we pay for it? Well, I mean, obviously. I gonna, love the ideas. It's just how do you pay for it? Well, we're going to have to defund part of our military. I mean, we always we spend almost three quarters of a trillion dollars on it every year. Um, okay. Then, obviously, you're going to have to privatize the, the health care industry, which is going to put the um, insurance companies out of money. Now, with the amount of money that we naturally spend, on on our healthcare system, it's actually cheaper to go to a national healthcare system than it would be, to keep the current system that we, we currently have. Yeah, but uh, okay, so Canada has that, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, there are a lot of can Canadians that come down here and prefer to get healthcare down here because that system is all backlogged, and mm -hmm. you know, then they also choose what they're going to fix and what they're not going to fix. There are downsides to that too. We have. We have that here, and with the insurance company dictates you know what kind of health care you're going to get. Yeah, if you have money, yeah, you're going to get better treatment. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't, I mean, um, so yeah, I mean that. But your your health our current system already even argues for that, anyways. So, I mean, that's why you pay a hundred dollars for a bag of saline. Um, yeah, that's that is ridiculous. I mean, I think we can agree that every. <laughs> That there's probably something shitty and fucked up in everything. Medical mm -hmm. care, government, you name it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we're for instance, we're number thirty two in the world for healthcare. We're not number one. Oh you no. Know. And and yeah. it's like, okay, and everyone goes, Well, we need to keep our current system. I'm like, if America's so great and so prosperous, why why are we why are we defending this system? You know, and yeah. it, it's shit. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Our education system is fucked in comparison to the rest of the world. I mean, that that's what I'm saying that the country is fucked and we as citizens, whether we're Republicans or Democrats or libertarians or purple or pink or blue or green or aliens, you know, that just happen to be raised and born. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about actuals. Woo. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, you know, we, we have to, sit here and come together and figure out how we need to solve the bigger issues sure. you know the big issues and uh, to before we can solve some of the other ones and that's because there's too much infighting at the top you know with 
all the government officials that the things like your healthcare system, you know, or your college thing that you want to do, which, like I said, if somebody can figure out a way to pay for it, that jives with me, you know, I would be for that, you know, mm -hmm. I, my, you know, but that that's getting off of the topic that I'm saying is that, um, you know, we've got to deal with the bigger issues first. You know, the government is the problem. So what, what is the bigger issue? The, the problem, the fact that we've got lobbyists that can buy out our government, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, we've got, you know, that, that can sway the vote however the heck they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the fact that, uh, like, I, like I said and told that lady, um, we've got kids coming out of college that have no life experience sitting here and wanting to be lifetime politicians the the fact that politicians start getting into this mindset of i need to do what i need to do to get reelected, not to do what's best for the country sure so that because they need to stay in their job because if they don't get reelected, then they're out of work mm -hmm. you know we need to fix those parts of the system and get it back to uh kind of like going to uh jury duty yeah. You, you live your life, you sit here and you come and you serve your country and then you go back home. You know? I, agree. I agree with you on that. I was, uh, I was actually weirdly really talking to my fiance earlier early day about that. Um, and now, I think there's, there's I think a bit because, of uh, and just to finish up that thought and, and not to cut you off, I apologize, is that, um, you know, I think that's an issue that we need to solve first because those are the people that mm -hmm. are making it so that we can't get uh, some of these other things accomplished because mm -hmm. they're too busy cock blocking each other mm -hmm. in the government to make real change that could benefit, you know, the entire population. So, yeah, I agree. Like, I agree with, um, you know, certain like term limits and stuff and obviously getting rid of lobbying. And that's going to be a incredibly difficult thing to do in this country, even though yeah. every flavor of the country outlawed it. Um, you're going to have, like, I think one issue, even with the president having two, like, it has two terms. I think that needs to be changed to one term, six years. You used to have a president for six years. That's, I mean, that's it. Um, and then put your, obviously, your term limits on your on your congressmen and, and senators and stuff. Because they're the ones that got pissed off about FDR uh, being president for four times. So they put term limits up. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I, but definitely lobbying. I think, I think lobbying and getting ringed like uh, Max, Max uh, brought this up, Citizens United. Uh, absolutely. Um, but the problem is, is the people who are going to make those laws benefit from, from allowing it to happen too. So that's incredibly difficult. Yeah. Uh, Anthony asked, I have a question for Eric. Uh, what is he doing that he is so busy uh, that's all I hear from everyone, but all I see them doing is buying expensive things constantly. Uh, I mean, Telegram, you've seen what I've done. You, I think you're better off to sit here and, you know, I, I just think he, the, this Anthony C just hasn't been watching. I mean, as of lately, you're right. I haven't been doing much of anything because the convoying is over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so if you've only tuned in recently, you're 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 a hundred percent right. Um, but I have money. I've owned three properties. I'm not broke. That's mm -hmm. why I'm also not sitting here. Even though people have offered, people offered me to get a rental car if that car would have uh, turned uh, got turned back in, and I didn't take it. You know, I told them no. I'm fine. I can sit here. You know, um, people have offered to pay me the six hundred dollars that I'm going to end up having to spend to go home and. I, I'm not broke, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, it, it's a hardship, but I'm not a grifter and everybody knows that, you know, you're not, you're not. but you can, you, if you want to tell, you know, well, I think I answered it. Go ahead. Keep, keep going. Yeah. With your statement. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, since I met you, I think, like I said, I think you're the hardest working person. It's probably been in this convoy. I have always kind of said that time and time again. Um, and no, I think even from the time I met you, like face to face at, at the convoy, you were, it seems that you're kind of, you've kind of been done with it the last few weeks anyways. So like, I think you're just kind of just hanging out and enjoying your summer. I mean, and, and, and honestly, in my opinion is, well, I was waiting it, for my truck that I just got back today. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, 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 and now, also, now it's like, you know, might as well wait till Monday and go with Mike, you know, mm -hmm. instead of going alone. So that's, that's really what it is. And I wanted to get, and I needed an excuse. I wanted to get the Wii boost. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gave me the time to have it delivered on Friday. Cause I, I kind of want to try to pursue this YouTube thing, which is not going to be anything about the convoy. It's going to mm -hmm. be, other stuff it's going to be building projects my mud trucks it's going to be a completely different thing and we're going to see if i sink or swim if everybody that's just watching me is watching me for convoy content and if that's what it is then i'll wrap it up but i can justify the wee boost anyways because i do go to a lot of remote locations that have shitty cell service so i bought it, it you can check nobody offered to donate any money to buy it it that came out 100 percent out of my pocket you know so it's kind of my criticism too of like the whole movement itself. It's like, okay, if you guys just want to hang out in parking lots for the rest of the summer and have a tailgate party, like go ahead. Um, even like when I want to talk to Santa about I'm like, listen, if you want to start a cult, have fun. You know what I mean? I'll come down and interview. Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in that stuff. Uh, but like, don't, don't utilize like a bunch of intellectual fluff under this other thing, under these other pretenses. And especially with, you know, some people are like, hey, we're doing this for freedom. We're doing this for that. Give me donations. Like, if you want to be a grifter, just say you're a fucking grifter. Uh, yeah, but but in, in all honesty, if somebody sat there and said they were a grifter, then they wouldn't get donations. So sure. if they actually are a grifter, they can't say they're a grifter. You know what? I've been I've been to more rallies yeah. than the majority of the supporters of the movement. And my opinion of them is, where the hell are you? I don't only support it and I come. And uh, everyone gets in a tiff because I'm there and they want me banned and they want this and they want that. And it, it's whatever. But I think, I think that's the interesting portion of all of it too. You know, <laughs> let's write Hong Kong and freedom on the chat board. Cause it, we're really changing the world doing that. Yeah. I mean, because that's the one thing, even with it, like, just looking at how the, the, the spectrum of, of what's left with the movement now versus what, how it started with a lot, with a lot of the streamers. I mean, you, you especially had people like Saznak that was a, a jaggernaut at uh, donations. Yeah. Um, you had, you know, Grey Wolf, you had a GWT333. Um, you had... Well, GW3 uh, or GWT333 yeah. wasn't a streamer originally. Uh, he only became a streamer because when we installed uh, um, uh, First Responders CB, First Responder decided to pay me for the work I did. And uh, Tom, which is how I know him better, uh, mm -hmm. asked him to sub him to, to put it out and get subs. So he wasn't originally a streamer prior to it. Yeah. Yeah. But you still had all those people. But look at how it evolved. I think yeah. I think the evolution of it. I think especially, you had a lot of just moderate conservative people in the beginning, and then you had the people who really joined. You had your Jersey Jersey Jays who started, and it started with that more extreme content that everyone wanted. That whole drama and the whole narrative of that, um, and then it's kind of evolved to kind of what it is today. You know, then you had like Black Conservative Preacher, and you had you know Taco Joe. You had, yeah. Uh, behind the mirror, wanted to know how I'm towing the trailer and camper. The camper actually goes in the bed of my truck, and then I have a three foot extension. Uh, it's a double double hitch uh, that carries the weight, which then allows me to pull the trailer. Um, I did in California. I hooked up my truck trailer to the back, and then I had the dolly behind it. But because I'm going to be taking the uh, the mechanics trailer back. I'm going to load all my trailer stuff to the back the and trailer the and just have the mechanics it, trailer. But because I'm going to be taking the, the uh, go ahead the mechanics trailer. Yeah, you back. had this natural evolution, and then you had a lot, a bunch of restreamers, um, and then it was all about the more extreme content. And I think it's kind of evolved, especially with the movement today, where 1776 is much more of the extremist people left over from the TPC. Um, I mean, and, and you can obviously probably include AFC as well um to it but you know they're they're you know once they once they said they're breaking up you're kind of done at that point i mean and obviously yeah, yeah jersey jd get kicked out for fighting but at the same time as you kind of kicked out your number one streamer but also he decided to you know 
he very much incorporated with that troll culture as well, though. Um, and you know, obviously, you start reacting more the more pre the more of a presence you start getting. Um, so yeah, I don't even really look at myself as a streamer down there. Uh, I've streamed like one time, and I was a little bit, but I yeah. guess you can call me something. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not as in depth as everybody else's rig. You've seen mine. It's the twenty dollars Amazon tripod, and you know, <laughs> my cell phone barely gets service. The only reason I, and I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure people know who, who I am and what my real number name is. And they've checked out my Facebook and they, they know that I've been doing videos, uh, in my hometown, kind of uncovering some corruption in, uh, my local, uh, area, um, where they're trying to do stupid laws that affect Democrats and Republicans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I brought pretty much every piece of equipment that I have. Other mm -hmm. than uh, a cord, I needed to switch from a GoPro to my phone. Yeah. Oh, and I did, I did get, uh, I did get a hundred dollar donation towards my gimbal. Uh, but other than my gimbal and that cord, I own and these adapt and two adapters I needed so I could charge and hook up my my uh, my cable. Uh, I pretty much had all this gear already, so it just it just happened to be. You know, I figured if something went down and, you know, I was in an Ottawa type situation, it might have been worth bringing the gear with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's the interesting part about it all. So, like, even me, I'm viewed, <laughs> I'm viewed as an Antifa troll and <coughs> an infiltrator. Damn you are. Yep, and, yep. And a traitor and 100%, everything. 100%. Yep. And, I uh, agree. and, uh, yeah, so do I. Um, <laughs> you, you just, you just, you just agree with it. I just, but, yeah, uh, sure. Yep, yep. But I've never, I've never gotten a dime from this movement. You know, I've actually spent more money on this movement than uh, you know I've ever received because I never asked for anything. Yeah. You know, I donated twenty six cents to the seventeen seventy six, and then I gave t Wyckoff like ten bucks for his trip on the star. You want just because you wanted to slap Doe in the face? Yeah, we can fuck himself. So <laughs> get, get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come off of a mic real quick. I gotta grab a remote for my air conditioner because for some reason it's not turning back on. So mm -hmm. give me one second. Uh, I'm gonna make give me. Give me a pause. Yeah. Let's see. I'm looking for my, my cup. It's time for some. So I'll check the chat in a second. I'm making a mix. Hi, I'm back. All right. So yeah, no, I've actually spent, and then obviously the gas and the time and everything going down there. So it's so interesting when I read the chats and they all hate me and they want me dead. So uh, I mean, I don't do anything to you guys. <laughs> yeah. I outed myself from day one. Uh, you know, I said where I where I, and I didn't even say I was. You know, I'm not BTM or anything. I said, hey, I post here and I don't speak for the internet, but I'm from the internet. So, uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't understand the internet's concerns and their, the internet lore and theory. The guy was talking to Santa about it and I was like, you know, he was like, you know, I, I, ha I have a girlfriend and I, you know, I'm not dating Rose and they say I'm dating Rose and I'm like, well, you're just going to have to own it. I mean, just go with the lore. I mean. <laughs> I'm just trying to read some stuff in the chat. I saw... Um, Jody D boy said, uh, that would be interesting to watch Eric. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, uh, what, uh, I didn't, couldn't see what, uh, what that, what Jody was sitting here saying was referencing to. So if you'd, uh, message what that was in reference to, I'm kind of curious. But yeah, I think it's, what's interesting too, uh, someone brought this up is like, it was the chat is the consensus builder. And uh, there, there is a certain truth to that, like the narrative, because it is boring as hell watching trucks go down the road. I, I don't think that anyone's going to argue that, but it's it's very much directed a certain narrative of this. Yeah. Uh, Ob Frith uh, said, "What about the drone?" Um, I did. You, you're right. I did buy the drone, uh, but I bought that in the early days of Hagerstown, way before I was a streamer or anything like that. Um, Chris. Uh, had a DJI Mini 
and it was really kind of my first experience. He let me fly it, and uh, I just decided I wanted to buy one. Uh, that was way before the donations. That was way before um, I was really even the mechanic uh, with the convoy. Uh, that was a personal purchase I made long before uh, the mechanic spawned or anything. So mm -hmm. I, I just decided I wanted to buy one um, because I do a lot of that mudding stuff. And uh, the biggest thing is that a lot of people don't film it, you know. So I bought one that has active tracking, and I wanted to uh, track, have a, have one that could track my vehicle as I go through like a mud pit. So that was just a personal purchase I made, and um, I could probably even pull up the date of when I ordered it from Amazon if somebody really wanted to verify that I bought it in a time frame. That was before I became, before anybody even really even knew who I was. But you are right, I did buy that. Oh, yeah. What else does the chat have to say? Come on, chat. Sometimes you can't shut the hell up. We brought uh, Wizzy on here the other day, and they, before he got on, they are having, like, really intellectual questions, and he got on, and they were just being horrible. I was kind of disappointed with them, but you know they were a freedom of speech chat over here. I mean, you literally—I know there's two rules to get you banned from here, but uh, uh, you, no one really gets banned. So if you get a banning, it's, you, it's, you're you're never gonna get unbanned. <laughs> it's just never gonna happen. So what's your what's your thoughts of uh, Eric about how it's evolving into? I know you've been. They're much more longer than me. So, like I did, like I said, I did a trip to Hagerstown, and me, like the rest of the internet, was just watching it, you know, unfold. Um, and you kind of lived it. So, from like day one to where it's at now, with you leaving, um, what's your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, I really can't speak to a lot after TBC really left. I mean, AFC, I really wasn't involved with them because I was out in California, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm here, they're kind of doing their thing. I've been just kind of doing my streaming thing. Uh, I haven't had a ton of interaction. A lot of the interaction that you've seen, I've streamed. And yeah. that's about all the interaction I've really had with AFC either. Um, they went up to New York, Buffalo. I wish I would have done that. Now, you know, knowing, but I couldn't because I had already agreed to stay back with the camp. And I'm not over at 1776. So all I can really speak on is really my time and have an informed opinion and actually because you guys watch the streams i don't watch the streams so you guys probably have a better opinion mm -hmm. you know watching the streams of what's going on now than i do because i'm not there and i'm not watching the streams um i personally think they should have and you know steer me back on course if you want me to answer a question more directly i personally think they should have taken action faster and i mm -hmm. think they just let it drag on too long if they wanted to have something accomplished. But I think like, I think at the same time as TBC wanted it to end. Um, I think they knew their time was up and kind of gave, I mean, obviously what, what was the remnants of, of, of what they left there, what turned into AFC. I mean, that's, I mean, that's practically the truth of that. And I think like, like I said, I've always empathized with AFC a little bit on the, Hey, we're rolling out in two days and cutting your funding off. And, you have 10 days on this parking lot and then, you know, figure it out. And uh, so they clean up their migraine. Yeah, your turn. Uh, T-U-A-A. -A. Um, my rate of donations uh, really once, well, shit. One second. Even Continue. probably, even probably a couple of weeks before we got back from California, there was nothing coming in. I mean, I, I've never really hard promoted, hey, you know, I need donations, I need donations. You know, even when it was the Mechanics Fund, we we really, the, the last bump of donations that I got was when we were at the drag strip. And uh, first responder, I, I just told him, you know, I told him prior to that, that there's just nothing coming in and it was really drying up. And there were things like there was a lady I had to do brake pads on and I would have liked to have replaced her rotors and probably would have replaced her calipers, but it just wasn't in the budget. 
I, I couldn't do it. So I did what was necessary then. And, you know, I let Joe kind of know that, you know, that, that it, that it pretty much had dried up and Joe took it upon himself to tell his viewers, um, to, you know, to donate and that, and that if they donated to any one of his platforms, because I only had Cash App and Venmo, and Venmo I had pretty much put out there was useless because I could only order things online because I didn't have the physical card and not a lot of people had Cash App. Um, he sat here and he Cash App me any donations that came into him. Uh, and that really was the last bump of donation money. Um, now, recently, uh, because I'm not doing the mechanics fund anymore, it's uh, literally been people sitting here and saying, you know, thank you for streaming. Thank you. Like I went to Arlington. I got a couple of dollars for going to Arlington and doing that coverage. Now it's more, and I'm, and you can still go on my site. And I'm not asking for donations. Uh, I mean, I put the link up there and just sit here and say, these here they are. I literally put it out as factual, you know, because I've had people ask me what my links are. Nightbot just goes out there and sits here and says, you know, if you want to, these are the links. Uh, I've actually gotten uh, a few in the last two or three days. Uh, I've actually gotten some super chats, and uh, which I have no access to because I've got a four-digit pin that got mailed to my house that I have to go home and enter in before I can even access that and YouTube will send me a check or something. And then uh, I've had a couple of Venmos and a couple of cash, cash apps come in, and I haven't asked for anything. And it's not been for the Mechanics Fund, it's just people that are enjoying my content and uh, you know want to do it. So in all actuality, I, it's actually on the rise, mm -hmm. but I'm not asking for it. You know, it just, it is what it is. You can watch my content you can see I'm not out there begging for it, but I've actually had uh, probably a couple hundred dollars come in in the last uh, two or three days. So, so what, someone put an interesting thought on here, and I, I don't want your perspective because you've been there the longest. So like I said, I did my little trips in here and there and followed it. And they said, it's crazy in the end. AFC looks better than 1776 and TPC in the end. Um, it's from Fireman17. What, what's your thought about that? Um, AFC is definitely a lot more chill, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the complaints that you guys are having um, don't relate over to what AFC is doing. Um, honest opinion, um, I think some of the arguing with people that have a different opinion uh, with some of the people that do do some streaming here or get on content uh, it kind of sours uh, some of what they're trying to do mm -hmm. um, I think they I think AFC would have done good if they could have find out found out like a Brian Brazi mm -hmm. somebody with that that charisma you know that people liked that people wanted to follow um, so I think that's part of it, you know, and the fact that, you know, they never had the funding. They lost a lot of people when mm -hmm. the TPC pretty much left them here and they chose not to go because mm -hmm. they never got the funding that the TPC had. So a lot of their members had to leave. Mm -hmm. And but, you know, T TPC I mean, uh, AFC, I think, could have had a chance with maybe somebody like a Brian Brazi type personality help, helping uh, run it. Um, honestly, my personal opinion, I think mm -hmm. what really killed AFC was the fact that TPC jumped, uh, jumped their date forward. Because mm -hmm. originally AFC was going to be the first convoy out of California. Because mm -hmm. TPC wasn't supposed to leave till. June, no, what was it? Uh, March 6th. They weren't supposed to leave till March 6th. And uh, AFC was supposed to leave on March 1st. And then TPC jumped ahead to the 23rd or whatever and left it, left earlier. I mm -hmm. think that's what killed it, uh, AFC. In but all do honesty. Think, 
we, but you also see that being an issue too with um, 1776, where where Santa has the charisma to handle what like how many people were there? I don't know, what like 15, 20 people or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, that he has the charisma to handle that. But do you think he could handle a movement of five hundred to a thousand people? Let's say, let's say hypothetically he got what he wanted. I think the biggest problem is they is both movements need that clean person. Mm -hmm. That's just clean. You know, really is kind of like that groomed politician clean. You mm -hmm. know, where. Nobody, you know, everybody can sit here, you know, there are people, Santa's got that bankruptcy hanging over his head. Sure. That's a, that's a point. He's a proud boy. That's a point. You know, do I think Santa's the guy to be, to be running it? Nobody else has stepped up. You know, I, I think it's, uh, he's running it because he, he feels that it needs to keep going. But if somebody were to stand up, I think that movement would be better off with somebody that's clean. You know what I'm saying? But and do I you think, think... Yeah, go ahead. But do you think someone could? I mean, because he said from day one that he's a, he's a dictator. Uh, he's not, he's not, it's not a democracy. Well, and, and again, it, I think a lot of that just comes from the, the fact that he saw the problems that the TPC had. And mm -hmm. it was too many... Too many people that were sitting here and trying to make the rules that one hand didn't know what the left hand was doing, the right hand didn't. You know, it, it really that's that's part of what made the TPC a clusterfuck is because you had too many too many chiefs, and they were all making their own decisions and they weren't talking, and it just turned into a clusterfuck. So by doing the I'm the, you know, everything the buck stops here, you know, it gives that more control, you know, because they have to answer to him. So I understand why he's doing it. I just don't think, I think that they should try to find somebody that is clean, you know, because like I said, there's, a, I think that's the biggest thing that's hurting them right now is that people are worried about the fact that, you know, he's got that bankruptcy possibly hanging over his head. Mm -hmm. He is a proud boy. And those are all negative things against him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's hurting their movement. And so, but, but there's also the other thing too, and this is What's something like of, of the symbolism that I've kind of seen down there. Like I said, I'm interested in cults and all that kind of religion and stuff. Yeah, I, that, I, I, that, I don't that know. They're, I, they're just, honestly, with that, I don't know. No, there's there's this idol worship of, of Brian, of Brian Braza, and like it's he's gone, and then I'm obviously Santa stepped up, kind of like a weird Moses. Um, yeah. but like. The embeddedness of how it's being, the evolution and of how what it turned into, because obviously no one could for a long time no one could say anything bad about Brian, and then you know the TPC broke up, and then everyone's like you know like fuck him, um, and then there's this cult like behavior that, that very much has been prevalent, kind of since day one with the followers of, of this movement. Are you talking about the 1776 movements in day one? Uh, and, and also, TPC? and also, the, and also, no, the TPC's evolution into that. Okay. Because I was when you said from the beginning, I wanted to know if you meant no. the beginning of the convoy period, the, or convoy the beginning period. of the of the 1776. No, the, the convoy period. That's you kind of evolved into that. Okay. Because there, I mean, obviously, when I go down there, there's lots of people who still have this idol worship of Brian. Like right, they're waiting okay. for Jesus to come back. Yeah. Well, I mean, Brian was a very good speaker. You know, you know, he was very good at motivating people uh, and inspiring people. So a lot of people <coughs> felt a lot of things. You know, I mean, I, I think some of Santa's speeches are very powerful. Even if you don't agree with the message, you can feel that. <laughs> It seems like he really believes what he's saying, and it comes across. So, you know, regardless of if you believe that the message or if you think he's full of shit or whatever, he definitely uh, is very. I think he's very good at speaking. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, he's a he's a very zealous person. Yeah, you know, which is the the one the red flags of of cult like behavior. You know what I mean, um, 
of, of, of having that. Yeah. 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 I know you don't want to get into it. That's actually that's something I want. I really want to talk to him about. I mean, um, you know, like I said, it's just you know, it's not my. You know, if I was a religious person, then I'd be de defending the religious part of it. But I'm not, so mm -hmm. I can't. You know, it's it's like me sitting here and talking to you about you know how do you how do you like to bend your sheep over? Unless yeah. you're a sheep guy, you know, I yeah. Why I are you going to talk about the topic? You know, I just. I agree. You know, I, I can't, you know, I see what you see. I sit here and kind of, you know, I, from an outside personality or an outside perspective, I'm seeing it too. And I'm going, yeah, that's pretty religious. You know, is it hurting or helping? You know, it seems like they're trying to get more of a religious, uh, people because maybe they think that they're more, uh, they're more likely to come join the convoy. I, I don't know. You know, like I said, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what their motivations are. But the, but the leadership under them is actually, it's dwindled the numbers. I mean, okay. you had bigger name streamers that left and, uh, you know, you're left with, uh, I think, I think it's kind of fight between the numbers between Oreo and Wizzy at this point. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Saznak, it was always clear. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was, he was huh? He's a juggernaut. He was a juggernaut. Uh, I think that his numbers were just completely off. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, he made it very clear that he wasn't going into DC and that certain things were just going to be what they were. And, you know, that's just what it was. And that, that was because his company wasn't going to let him go. You know, even if he would have wanted to, his company wasn't going to let him do it. So I'm going to ask you a weird question just to get your thought of it. Do you think 1776 is Trucker Waco? Um, I don't know mu much about Waco except for the little bit that I saw in the news, like when they actually smashed in and, you know, a little bit of like a documentary on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's just, it's an uninformed, it'd be an uninformed answer if I answered it. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, like I said before, I mean, there are a lot of people, Rose is extremely religious. I mean, I've met a lot of people that are very into the religion. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and if you are into that religion, I mean, they're doing, they're supposed to promote their religion. So, right. I mean, they're doing that. And if they are trying to get more people that are more like-minded religiously, to join the group they're I think they're doing the right thing, I guess, you know, by trying to pump that, you know, on the other fact where you guys are sitting here saying, well, that might be putting off people that are less religious. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see that point of view too. You know, it's, you know, I think, I think the movement right now is it, like, it's like they, like it's been for many a times is trying to try something new to try to get people to come and then if that doesn't work, well, then now what do we try? And then now what do we try? And this just is the newest uh, reincarnation of how do we get more people to come here? So do you, you know, well, so what's your thoughts? I mean, obviously the D-Day for them is July the 4th. Do you think they're going to go in D.C.? And what do you, what do you see going forward from them, from, from that? Oh, fuck. Fuck if I know. I mean, I, they won't give me any goddamn information. Why do you think I'm not going? I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know what it's going to be. You know, obviously, I mean, you know, I love Joe to death, you know, and I understand he wants to go back to school and stuff. But I mean, you know, I heard I, I, I have to talk to Joe. I mean, this is all stuff I've got in my chat. So not not verified through Joe, but we'll we'll speculate and pretend it's real. Um. But one of the people saying said Joe's not coming because he can't afford the plane ticket. Mm -hmm. um, when I was building Joe's air horns, one of his viewers dropped two hundred dollars on an air compressor like that. Mm -hmm. You know, to buy cash app so I could buy Joe that air compressor because I was sitting at the store. Oh. I mean, I'm pretty sure his viewers, if they wanted him, if they wanted him back in DC, they would have paid for that. So that that I didn't buy that that being an excuse. 
Um, you know, and this is just, you know, my opinion. You know, I don't think he thinks that there's much that's going to be going on there either. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what their plans are. They won't, they won't share them with me. Uh, I asked, you know, because I was interested if, I, if, if somebody would have told me something and I agreed with it, I've got 45 days worth of supplies. Why the fuck did I pack 45 fucking days of supplies? If I didn't plan on going into DC, no. you know, I mean, I don't know how the hell they're going to get in. All the roads are going to be closed. That's going to be the hot, the heaviestly fortified day in DC that there's ever going to be, you know, so I have no idea what the hell they're planning. So do you, do you view your time with the TPC into now as wasted time? Um, no, because I, I think that the movement in the States, uh, branched off of that. And I think that those movements have a chance of trying to do something. So, you know, on a national stage, I don't think that the, the this federal, I call this the federal movement mm -hmm. because we were trying to get the federal, federal government's attention, uh, was ever really going to go anywhere. I think that, you know, I think it was all about waking up America and trying to get people more active in their States personally. And, uh, to that, I think that, that they may have accomplished that. So with, with them accomplishing that, do you see it just going away after July the 4th then? I mean, it's going to, it's, you know, everyone's going to start going on vacation. You know, July is the number one vacation time in the United States that just going to fizzle out. And cause I mean, eventually the, eventually the well of donations is going to dry up. I mean, cause I mean, they're the, the streamers are even hitting it too. There's, they don't have the, There's not the excitement there. It's a. Uh, oh oh yeah, I mean I. I mean to a point they're going to because I mean I even saw that with the cash app. You know there would be a bump here and there. You know like let's say a new streamer. You know when the when the streamers first started promoting uh, the cash app, um, donations came in. You know I you know I was getting donations pretty much every day, mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of days. But then people you know, it wasn't a residual. You know, people would make their donation and it was the same viewers, you know, maybe let's say we had 5,000 viewers and say a thousand of them donated to one cause or whatever. Once they donated, they <coughs> were done, you know, mm -hmm. there wasn't enough new people coming in. And that's why, you know, like I said, there, there wasn't, I, I had to squirrel nest everything I had and then be picky and choosy on what and how much I spent on each vehicle and stuff like that, because it wasn't coming in. Mm -hmm. So I guarantee that there, there are probably other streamers and other places and other people that are having that same situation. And you're right. At some point there, people are going to be like, I've already donated and I'm not going to donate again, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not, they're not really even, even the, even though the movement's being carried by the streamers, it's not bringing in new streamers. Like I go down because I just need a hobby because yeah. it's backyard, but like, there's not other people going there to think, you know, they're going to be taken care of for whatever either. Yeah. Um, I mean, and like I said, it's kind of a war to the end of, you know, who's going to last longer, Wizzy or Oreo? Uh, I know Wizzy said he's there to the end. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, he's, uh, he seems like uh, he's definitely, uh, he's building his channel. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got a new OBS type setup and he's doing newer stuff, but I've noticed he's been doing a little bit more like car shows and stuff like that and not really covering the, the convoy as much. So I, I, I don't know if he's actually there to the end. But the thing is about covering the convoy is nothing's happening there. You know what I mean? I know he goes down and does that. He's like, I go when something's happening, but um, you know, outside of something happening, it's kind of a waste of my time in the past, uh, to even visit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they need to make a move, you know, and that, that's, that's the problem is they need to, they need to hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This entire time I've been basically sitting on a board, <laughs> you know, that's my step. And, uh, if you've ever sat on a bleacher, you, you can pretty much, uh, relate to the fact that my ass hurts. Oh, I bet. So, <laughs> so I had to get a little padding here. I've been, um, I've been leaning against the counter, so I understand. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, seems like he's going for different content. He's trying mm -hmm. to build his channel right now. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not seeing him stream quite as much uh, of the convoy stuff. So, you know, I'm not exactly sure if Wizzy is going to be in the long end, long run. Mm -hmm. um, Oreo seems pretty motivated that that's what he's going to do. So he's probably going to be the one that would tap out last, in, in my opinion. If, if, if I had to pick uh, who I thought was going to stay with the convoy longer, I'd, I'd probably say Oreo. But even when they drop to one streamer, you're dealing with one personality, and then you're talking about divisive personalities. You're, you know, I, I've been very vocal. You know, I, I get along, I get along with Z, and uh, I was like, hey, I don't agree with you following that van um, the other day. And, I uh, didn't see the video, so you know, I don't know. Oh, and okay. uh, it's flipping me over. <laughs> You know, people keep asking about it, and like I said, I, I just, you know, I, I suppose they should sit down and watch the video. Is it on Wizzy's? I'm assuming it'd be on Wizzy's. I, I think it is. I mean, it's kind of a mixture. Yeah. So, like, there's the interview that I do with her. So yeah. when everyone's running to the, the van after the kind of was all over, I interview her. And then it's kind of convoluted between, you know, what's happening at the van and my interview with her, and then, you know, obviously what happens... What proceeds afterwards, you know, with with Wizzy with Wizzy following her, and then there's some video of their van because they had cameras on their van. Yeah. I mean, I mean, our, I mean our van. No, I mean our van. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. supposedly I supposedly I I was involved in that, and I, I knew who they were. I guess I, I don't know. So. No, no, we were we were we were we were shotgunning PB uh, PBRs in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna release. Yeah. The, I'm gonna release I, the photo. I forgot about that. You gave me too much piss water. Yeah. You had two beers and fell over, and I had six. You know, no, that's no, okay. I, uh, no, no. That's not how I roll. You know, <laughs> it was at least a keg worth. <laughs> but, yeah, no. But I think, I think like, in my opinion, it's going to lose all motivation after after July the 4th. I, I, I really don't see it going anywhere, anywhere afterwards because there's no plans. There's no long-term plans for it. I mean, and, I mean it's going to get – you're dealing with Maryland and West Virginia weather, and uh, I think you've learned that uh, it's very weird uh, up here. Um, oh, with, oh, oh, yeah. What? What? It, it it was sunshine. It rained. It rained and snowed at the same time. Then it snowed. Then it hailed all in the same day, and then it was mm -hmm. sunny. Yeah. Yes, I, I know about this weather. Yeah. So it's it's pretty because up cause even down there, I was like, because I know Polish was asking me. She's like. So you visited, you know, Hagerstown. I'm like, yeah. She's like, would you stay the night? And I'm like, why the fuck would I stay the night? You know what I mean? I like running water and heat. Like, I, you guys are clinically insane. I mean, well, see, you know, for me, I basically have an apartment on, well, on stilts mm -hmm. right now because I haven't put my wheels underneath it yet. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, this is like having a, an apartment, you know, a small apartment. I've got my bed up here. I've got a bathroom and a shower right there. I've got a stove, I got a microwave, I got a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been, you know, you know, in any real hardship. You know, when it when we were down at below zero, my heater kept this place just perfectly fine. You know, mm -hmm. I, if I needed propane, I went and got propane. So, you know, I've been very comfortable the whole time. I, you know, whether I'm in a, I, that's what I do when I go to mudding events. You know, this is called boondocking, where mm -hmm. you don't have electricity, you don't have water hookups. I, I've done this a lot, so this doesn't, you know, when I go to these events every weekend or like I go to a Tomahawk bike rally, we'll be up there for two weeks, I'm used to boondocking. So yeah. this, you know, you put me in a dirt lot, a parking lot, or, you know, on gravel, it it's, I'm fine with it, you know. I come in here and this is my, my apartment, you know, it's not a big deal. We had a... Yeah, you had a lot of people. You live, you live up north. You know, you had a lot of people from the south and in California. They're like dying, and I'm like, I bet they fucking are. I well, mean, unless you're used to the climate, like. Well, that's I mean, because that's because you people from down here, you know, you people here, don't know that there's clothing like fleece lined pants that keep you warm, and jackets and all that fun stuff that makes it bearable. I mean, I was living in my truck 
you know, doing security at night in the middle of winter with my windows down and with my truck turned off so I could hear what was going on. And I was perfectly fine because I brought the gear to be dressed for that, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, technically, this bag right here, this is a this is a 20 below bag. You know, I when we were in winter, the first couple of days, I say, and I didn't even run the heat in here, and I was perfectly fine in that bag because I was out of the wind. Uh, I actually had to start running the heater because stuff in the camper was actually freezing. Like I had bottles of water and soda that was just in the camper and it got so cold in the camper that I started having things freeze. So I had to run the heater at least at minimum to keep things from freezing inside. But I was perfectly comfortable. You know, but yeah, I mean, in the right gear. But you also have the thing is like you're lucky from the from the ailments outside. You know, you have, I mean, for instance, looking at 1776, a lot of people are living in tents. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I, when it I, comes, I, wouldn't, oh, I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have done that. I mean, they're so dying right now down there in a tent from the heat, and then it's going to get colder. I mean, around, like, yeah. August, September, it's going to be okay. But, like, at, once you start getting further off from that, like, it's just not – I just don't think it's a long-term plan for them to do anything. And you have people leaving every day there. Um, they're not drawing in new crowds. They're not doing anything. I don't, I don't know the deal they have with the fireworks store. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's the – that's the problem, and I, I think that kind of keys into why they're maybe going more towards the, the religious side is they have to try to figure out how to bring in more people. And so far, everything else they've, they've tried hasn't worked, you know. Yep. I don't see that working either. You know, I mean, you well, have... I mean, you, you get people that are dedicated to the religion, you know, and you now sit here and, you know, you start saying that, you know, this is... Uh, this is our, you know, a fight for freedom and, you know, the, the Christian values and the Christian way, you know, I mean, that could be enough for that. I, I don't know. I, but I, like I said, you know, I don't know. But there's not a lot of old people going to sell their properties to go live in a, I mean, yeah. cause that's the one thing that you, you, you've seen it, you know, I've been there, you've seen it, the internet's seen it, that. There's that woman, like, you know, and Santa said it, you know, like, sell everything and come here and move with us. And, like, did what? what's the appeal? He said that? Yeah. I they had, they had, the first week I was there, they had the elderly lady on, on stage. Wow. That really had the speech saying, sell everything, come join us. Um, Santa said something similar to that. To that. I mean, I, I, I'll i sit and I'll tell you that, you know, a lot of the speeches that they usually do, mm -hmm. uh I honestly never really paid attention to them because most of them, um, most of the speeches, even with the TPC was all about getting the word out and hyping people up to try to get them to join. And I'm like, I'm already there. You know, I don't need reinforcement, uh, you know, to be here, you know? So 99% eh, maybe 95% of, of the meetings or the messages they did, I was either working on something else, so a lot of that stuff I never even listened to. Yeah, I, I try to pay attention when I can, it, but a lot of it is like very much fluff, and it's kind of the same thing like every week. And, and that's that's really what it was for me. I was like, I'm already committed. I don't need a, I don't need a re reaffirmation. And I know I screwed that word up, but you guys know what I meant by it. Um, of why I was there, you know. Sure. So I I didn't watch a lot of those. And maybe I probably missed things like that, but no, I didn't know he said that. And I'll just take your word at it. So uh, I want to finish up. I gotta use the bathroom soon. Huh. Um, beers. Uh, so do you have any, do you have any questions for me? Um, <clears throat> not really. I mean, you know, are you, are you willing yet to admit that uh, that uh, it's not a bad idea that we uh, do voter ID with the real ID? Because okay. uh, everybody has to basically function in the United States with a ID already. So the excuse that people don't have these IDs is pretty much ludicrous if they're a citizen. Because you can't cash a check. You can't do almost anything without it. So the thing is, the argument to that is we have the issue of states' rights and states are involved with this. But if you're making it a federal issue of you can't vote without, without that, then well, the, the, federal, the federal government needs to, needs to allow to supply you an ID. Okay, now there's other arguments of you could tie your your. But we've already said, and you already agreed that pretty much everybody has to have one to function. So that's at some again. point. At some point. At some point. Yeah. 
That's something. Yeah, so pretty much everybody has them to function. So but you could, but you could also do like you could you could also do like a fingerprint scan on that too, um, to get around doing ID laws, to ID you personally as well. Um, like I said, you know, states run, states run the um the election. So, so a fingerprint, in a sense, would be more secure because that's your fingerprint. Yeah. In a in a sense, so if you if you're willing to do something that's even more secure. Mm -hmm. than the ID, then why are you opposed to the ID? Well, I'm not opposed to the ID. The IDs are unconstitutional. It says, you know, you don't have to have an ID. It doesn't say you need an ID to vote um, in our constitution. Um, okay. But I'm saying there's other ways but, around that too. And if, and if obviously, if the federal government is saying, because what you're asking for is a federal, uh, so, practically so you, a constitutional amendment. So you're so asking you're for not, a constitutional amendment. So you're not, and I, I'm not trying to cut you off because I'm sure. just trying to stay on this topic. Um, so you're okay with with more securing the mm -hmm. vote. You're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by using something that would be like your thumbprint. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but your issue is the ID. Why is it the ID? Why okay. is that such a big I, I thing when everybody has one? Mm -hmm. That's that's what I don't get. Is I is I don't get if everybody in the United States is functioning, you they know, don't. has to but have one. There's some people who don't function with them. So people like who live in the cities, for instance, are less likely to get IDs than people who live in rural areas like myself. How, well, but how? If they have to cash a check, if they have to pay rent, if they got to, if they got to do anything, they have to, if they want to get a, if they want to get a, if they want to get a pack of cigarettes. Well, some they, people don't. They want to go into a bar. You well, some know, people don't wanna... drink. Some people don't yeah. drink. Some people don't smoke. I mean, but I mean, the reality is, is that the the number of people that are running around with the, out an ID is got to be minuscule. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's, just, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's a very small percentage. I'll give you that. It, yeah. it, it, exactly. So if it's this small of a, of a percentage, and those people, if they chose to want to vote. When you're telling someone, that much of a hardship to go like get an ID, you're telling a person they have to spend money to get an ID to be able to be able to vote. That's the issue. What's an ID cost? Uh, Ten dollars. But it's still it's still an issue of of you shouldn't have to pay. You know, it doesn't say in our constitution that you need an ID to vote and you have to buy an ID. I'm saying, so, so, and if the federal government wants to give out IDs to vote, then that's that's a completely different issue. Well, it doesn't even have to be the federal government; it, it could be the state. So you would be perfectly fine. So are you trying to say that as long as the ID doesn't cost them anything, that you would be fine with the ID being the the form of I'd be um, more proof. I'm I'm more open to that. Yeah, um, but like I'm saying, like I said to you before, like I'm very kind of apathetic on voter ID laws. Um, due to you know how states run run them. Um, now, if you want, when everyone argues for it to be federally done, that would be you. Need, you literally need a constitutional amendment, and that would be at the federal level. And you have to override the state level on that. And then you're talking about federal governments giving out IDs. And then you would talk about okay, how am I supposed to go and because it's free to register a vote. You I mean you can do it on your computer online? Um, um. Do it at home place and stuff. So you get a voter ID card doing that, because when you when you sign up to do you know when I got when I registered to vote back in what two thousand two two thousand three I think um, I didn't have to you know show ID to register. I did that at the okay. Vans Warp Tour. <laughs> All right. So Sassy Pants says a lot of homeless people don't have IDs, but they could have them hypothetically if. If there was a program in place that allowed for free, well, you know, I, I think California has free IDs. I, I don't. I'm not quite sure on that. I'm not sure if they charge for IDs. You know, I I haven't had an ID forever. I've always had a driver's license, and I've always had to pay for a driver's license. I've never been in the position where I haven't had a driver. Well, I did maybe very early in my life where I had an ID, and I don't even remember. If if there was a charge, but ultimately it sounds like you're basically saying that, you know, you're okay with, if I'm summarizing what she's basically said, you're okay with IDing people in a free method. Yeah. Whether it be like a fingerprint or possibly an ID, you know, you're okay with securing the vote. Mm -hmm. Your, your biggest problem is, is, is that it may cost somebody 
And yeah. if somebody could come up with a way that doesn't cost anything, um, you'd be fine with it. Yeah. Like I said, I'm very apathetic to the ready laws. So like okay. that's not what I'm at. I'm more about maybe making the uh what we call it the uh election day a federal holiday. Um, you know, because I know Tell America- Telescope, they're telling you to go pee because you're doing the PP dance. Okay. All right. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Answer the QA. And I'll stay on for a few more minutes and I'll let you go. <laughs> okay. Well, seeing I was going to the Air and Space Museum in Virginia, Virginia tomorrow, I should probably try to get some sleep. Maybe I'll just push it back a day. I don't have to. I was trying to push to go to that uh, museum while I still had the courtesy car because it would have gotten better gas mileage. But now that I have my truck, I guess I really don't have to go tomorrow. I can. It's going to cost me the same amount of gas if I go tomorrow or, or, well, today now. If I go today or if I go the next day or whatever. Lee Moss Man. I know that name. Where's Lee Moss Man? Behind the mirror was commenting about something you said. Where are you? There it is. Go Florida Man. Okay. Okay. Trying to catch up on the chat. Dude. If you're going to drink to that point, you know, at least mute the camera. Travis having meltdown, blah, blah, at least verify the signature. Uh, why did that stop draining? The, uh, no, it's called draining the main vein, not the lizard. Uh, you don't have to, if you don't have, have a photo ID and you want to vote, your state should provide a free basic ID free of charge that's how indiana does it yeah i don't know how other states all do it but you know i mean he's basically made it clear that as long well he said it you know as long as it's he's okay with it being more secure it just has to be cheap i made a chip implant joke oh okay yeah, it seems like a lot of people want to do that RFID thing, but I think that would be dangerous, kind of like people with skimmers for your cards. You know, now you're going to have a chip in your arm, and all somebody's got to do is come by you and steal all your information. What I'm not for is the new ID law in Georgia where it's against the law to take food or water to people standing in line. Okay. Now, now my big thing, the only thing I, I don't know is how secure is a fingerprint? I mean, what is the, what is the error rate of a fingerprint? You know, because they only test so many markers, you know, how, at what point does it come that if you had a national database of everybody that's fingerprinted as verification, are you going to be able to go and you put your finger on that pad and now it thinks you're somebody else? Because I, I can't believe that out of how many millions of people live in the United States and the res- resolution of only so many points of contact you know, that they couldn't accidentally, uh, it it wouldn't pick up somebody else. You know, when you put your finger, that, that's the only thing I I've got there with the whole fingerprint thing is I just, that database would be huge. And then it would have to scan the entire 5 million people or whatever database, you know, or whatever. I don't even know what the population is in the United States. I'd have to look it up. 330, 330 million. 330 million, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you'd have, you'd have a database of 330 million people that, that you'd scan, you'd have to scan every time somebody touched the pad to verify them, verify themselves. I, I just don't know, you know. So, so I have a question for you. So you brought up that you, you're doing trucking now and you were a mechanic. Now you're doing trucking and, and well, you brought- no, I, I was a mechanic. Then I did, uh, 
then I went and became a maintenance mechanic. That was a little less uh, working eight hours a day with my hands the whole time. Um, it was a slower pace. Then I got into computers, um, and then I got into truck driving. So, so along with that is you brought up a, a joke earlier. I mean, probably been serious. I don't know. You're you're a pretty personable guy. Um, about the automation of of industries in the future. You know, he's like, I'm I'm going to do this until, you know, the trucks are automized and, and they can drive themselves. Oh, it's coming. So, so along with that is you're going to have industries that are going to be just completely wiped out. What's oh. your, what's your thought of the universal basic income? Like a UBI check. So you get like, let's say hypothetically like 1200 bucks a month from the government. Yeah. Um, I haven't put a lot of thought into it. Mm -hmm. But it's even a lot of even right and left wing people argue for as well. It's not. Yeah. Just I honestly have not put a lot of thought into it. So anything that I would say right now would be 100% off the cuff with no thought. And I just, I like to try to form a, you know, if you just hit somebody off the cuff and they don't really haven't really yeah. thought about it it's just yeah. just yeah. you know it's just you know it's uninformed it's whatever uh, you know yeah I, would you I would you support would you would you support it i don't know what the pros and cons of it would be i haven't really thought about the pros and cons i mean you know I mean, a utopia, you know, Star Trek type, you know, money is no, you know, and it's all about exploring your inner person and becoming the Space. best version of you. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I you know, um, again, how would you fund it? Well, obviously, I, it all, you're going mean, to have to tax the people, the progressive tax rates. Yeah, but defunding certain things like um yeah making the billionaires pay nothing in tax and uh making all of us working class i mean you know a, a, a lot of the things that i hear from the left you know and i and not to put the label out there you know a lot of things i hear from the left are great ideas i love the i love a lot of the ideas free college for everybody free health care mm -hmm. you know this this income thing yeah. the, the thing I, you know and they're all great ideas I, you know, I, I'd love to have every single one of them. Uh, the, the one thing I just don't hear is without, you know, weakening something else, mm -hmm. um, how do we pay for it? Well, you, you know? obviously have things like progressive tax rates. So, like, for instance, well, I mean, the, the, pro country. the problem is with the rich, they'll just move. Yeah. You know, you, no, you well, say, you're, you're, I mean, that, that, but that's the problem is that. If you tax them too much and they decide that they don't want to be here, they are rich enough that they'll just leave. Well, I don't. You know? think, I don't think there's an ability to live on the moon. Is there the uh, the a bank on the moon? I mean, well, obviously, I, if if Jeff Bezos moves to some other country, he's probably going to be taxed at a much higher rate than he is here. But you could still have progressive tax rates and make them pay, you know, um, and not and not be as as bad. Rich people don't pay taxes. No, they just don't. No. They, they don't. And, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, to sit here and say, well, we'll just tax the rich, you know, it, it, it's just not going to happen. You know, they they will sit here and they will become a citizen somewhere else and they'll just visit the United States, mm -hmm. which then they and they just won't do business here. But, and then they won't be applicable to those taxes. They'll figure out a loophole. You know, I mean, they, they, no matter guess, what you try to do, they're going to find a loophole and they're not going to pay. You start taxing businesses, they'll just leave, you know, if it gets to a rate, and then we're going to lose jobs and, you know, industry and stuff like that. It's a very fine line. You have mm -hmm. to sit here and you have to balance what are they willing to accept and, and, and stay and pay versus what do you want to get out of them, you know? But you could also do the, you could also have like what foreign countries have is uh, VAT taxes and all that kind of stuff on imported goods and and everything where we don't we don't have in the United States, so people live in like Europe and Canada and, and all that kind of stuff have those. And then then at that point, then they would just choose not to sell to America. 
I mean, they're not, it, going, they're not going. They're not going to. I mean, no business. No, it, it's kind of like. Uh, I mean, look I at mean, the day with Walmart. You know, they chose not to sell parental advisory CDs, so you create a market of going to the mall to find to get your Camelot or disc jockey or whatever, or Sam yeah. to buy those. I, I mean, the whole problem is, is everything is a fine line. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a. How much can you get away with before somebody just says, "Fuck it, I'm out of here." You know, and that's that's really what it is. You you can only tax to such a level that the person's willing to pay before they just say, I'm out of here, you know, and the rich people can do that. They can sit here and they can leave. The fortune 500 companies can move to Mexico, can move to China, can just say, I'm out of here, you know? And that's, that's what happened is, you know, things got overtaxed and those well, companies left. Well, we allow, we, we allowed those industries to leave though too. But it, it's America. They can't, you can't yeah. stop them. Sure. You can't, you can't sit here and say, no, you're an American company. You can't move to China. But you can say, we're not going to buy your fucking product, too. You can. And then they'll just sell. They'll, they'll sit here and pack up and they'll sell this to some other market. But you the know? market in America is much, much better than it is in the Croatia. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, it, it, there's a fine line. You know, I mean, and like I said, until somebody can sit here and, you know, give me a a real how do we pay for all this it's it's basically just all philosophical i mean it sounds great i would love to live in a star trek type mm -hmm. environment where you know i have no worries about money i don't have to think about you know how i'm gonna get fed you know and just be the best version of myself mm -hmm. that'd be great i love the idea free health care i don't have to worry about that i could literally just do whatever i want to do in my life and become the best version of myself how do we pay for it you know I mean, and then, we, we're going to have to re readjust our budget i mean that's the one thing that we're finding since the war in ukraine now where there were countries that literally had hardly anything on their military budget are now spending money in the military budget so and, and all honesty as much as i i really do love especially things like the norwegian in the norway model um yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we, we've su we supplemented the world with our military, with our military budget. I, and I agree. We shouldn't be giving out all this money to all these other countries. You know, I understand that. Mine's not, the, not giving out the money. Mine is we, we are Team America World Police. When yeah. you have an issue, we're the ones fighting the fucking war. Exactly. You know, that, that type of stuff. And then, you know, there's been a lot of times where we're paying out money. Yeah. You know, we're doing a lot of stupid shit. And again, that... That relates back to under underlying deals. Oh, you scratch my back when I get into this office. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm going to and send you money. You know, you know the whole Hunter Biden. You know, you know, and I, whether or not you agree with it, whatever. It's pretty sketch that he's on some board for all these panels over over in other countries, and he doesn't know shit about it. But we're not going to get into that. But you know, no, I don't want to. You know, I whatever. You know, it is what it is. You know, but that's, you know, that's the government. That's what's all wrong with the government. And like I said, all the problems that we're having right now still relate down to the fact that we've got a shitty government that's fucking over the American people. Yeah. And we need to deal with that, you know. Um, you know, like you said, you know, like the medical bill stuff, you know, it's, you know, $1,000 for a bottle of water, you know, saline, whatever. <laughs> Well, the government's doing the same shit. They're buying something and they're paying, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for a toothpick. You know, they're doing stupid shit too. I mean, we really have to fix the government mm -hmm. and a lot of the, a lot of this overspending and and then programs like you're talking about. Maybe the funds may be available. You well, know, the thing, the thing is, is the funds were available. So, for instance, is the biggest transfer of wealth happened at the beginning of the of the pandemic. It yeah. was right before Congress got out. They transferred five trillion dollars to the banks, with absolutely yeah. no oversight. Five trillion dollars, yep, yep, uh, with no oversight. So, for instance, a student loan bailout to bail out the entire student loan industry right now to make it all go away is one point three trillion dollars. Yeah. It's roughly the same for giving everyone in the United States free medical care. That literally would have paid that off for multiple years. The amount of money that was given to the banks with no fucking oversight at all. Yeah. But you know, like we don't talk about that in the news, right? We we talk about other things because, you know, 
who owns the news networks? Who owns, you know, rich yeah. people? Rich people. I mean, they're yeah. going to tell because they're not going to they're not going to tell you what what how their stocks rose, you know. And we're all here fighting for Dogecoin, so. Yeah. I mean. Maybe you can be a Dogecoin millionaire one day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think a lot of the problems that we have still stem on the government screwed up. And we all know the government screwed up. And, you know, Democrat, Republican, we all need to come together on some common ground and figure out what are the things that we agree on mm -hmm. as Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. or Libertarians or whatever the hell you call me because I've voted both ways, mm -hmm. you know, and and fix the problems we can fix. You know, and then once we get a, a system in place of politicians that are actually there to do the job, you know, start working on all these problems. We're so focused on all the other problems and trying to work within a broken system. Mm -hmm. That's stupidity. Nothing you're talking about is going to get accomplished because the government's fucked. Mm -hmm. You oh, yeah. know, so I'm not saying of, the government's none, perfect. Of, none of all this other stuff, you know, the one point whatever trillion to pay off schools, it's not going to happen. The no. government's fucked. No. You know, this, it's going uh, to have to, though. It has this, to happen. This, uh, this, uh, 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 step in or whatever the heck you called it, you know, check thing, you know, it's not going to happen. The government's broken. You know, it, it all relates down to the government's fucked. We've got to deal with. We've got to come together and deal with the bigger issue. Well, that's and that's before any of this is going to work because they're too. They're not going to work together. Well, that's kind of the work that I've been trying to do, going down with the, with all you guys, and yeah. talking and, op and opening up those echo chambers for all that because it's not working. Um, you know, you have to work together and find some some mutual accord. You know, you've seen what the internet said about you guys for months. Um, I because I don't go on it. Yeah, like I said. But like you, you, you see, you seen what happened for months on, on the internet with with all the whole trucker thing, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go in here and break down the kind of the barriers a little bit. Um, everyone's been living in their echo chambers and kind of needs to stop. You know, and uh, you know, let, let's have like dialogue and conversation. You know, I, I don't think a lot of posters on BTM could imagine you being on here and having conversations a few months ago. I, don't, I, just, I just don't, I don't think so at all. I'm perfectly fine having conversations. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, am I the most educated in the government uh, and how everything works and all the inner, you know, this policy was done and that was done? No, I, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just a guy that understands that things uh, are not working, you know, and that, and I understand what I understand. You know, I'm not a political watch hound that sat here and dug into everything so you know it is what it is you know these are just my opinions from my limited perspective of what i've seen and what i've read and you know it seems like these are just issues that everybody's kind of aware of but nobody's doing anything about you know no. well i think people were talking about i think change doesn't start without having dialogue and i think things have come so far and especially in the last few years especially since the Trump administration that people don't talk anymore and they can't relate, you know, like I see even on our boards, um, you know, I do, I do an interview with Alyssa and everyone loves it. And I go and kind of do the same interview with Lizzie and then I'm vilified, you know, and, um, you know, there are people who literally have not spoken to their families in years, um, because of them being Trump supporters. And, you know, there's literally people yeah. that you probably met in the movement going, Hey, you know what? I can't wait for a second, second civil war and kill people that I perceive as liberals in the street. Um, yeah. And I, and, and that's not, you're not going to get anything done by that way. I mean, if everyone's a, if everyone's a narcissistic sociopath, Oh, you are going to have a civil war, but like, who's going to win that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I am afraid that that's, that's the path that we're on. I, I don't I, think it's I, I, I truly believe that there are going to be some radicals that are eventually going to going to spring up and they are going to try 
try doing that. Mm -hmm. There are groups out there that are serious about that. And I so think you, that's going to be a problem at some point. So you brought up the issue of, you know, things like Santa being a proud boy. There's Is a lot. my camera turned off? Or no, I'm on, oh, I'm, I'm on, on live. On. Never mind. I forgot I paused my stream. I looked down and I was watching the chat and I realized my camera wasn't on, but I forgot that I, I paused it. No, you're Never on. Mind. So you have things like issues with things like the Proud Boys, where Santa is and you know has affiliations with. I don't. I don't know if he still claims to be one or not. I don't. You know, I mean, there's a lot of identity. He still claim. He still claims to be a Proud Boy. Okay, so I brought it up to him the other day, and he kind of just like kind of brushed it off. So, I, well, I didn't that's that's you. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're yeah. you're you're Antifa. You know. Yeah, well, I tell him that. I'm like, yeah, I just own it, dude. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> Are you actually Antifa? No, I mean I'm anti-fascist because I don't believe in a fascist government. So, okay. I guess if you don't believe in a fascist government, you're anti-fascist. You know I mean, okay. but like, am I? Well, uh, I did. I was just clearing that up because you were joking about it, but I didn't know if you were claiming it. Am I? Am I down there putting pipe bombs in everyone's car and uh, you know, yeah. throwing throwing bottles? And no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not a I'm not a violent protester. I mean, like I said, our our great grandparents who fought in World War II were anti -fa. So. Um, but yeah, besides that point, with, 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 with that, you have a lot of Proud Boys and uh, Boogaloo Boys and Three Percenters and that literally want that that Civil War in the streets. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's, if that's our path, you know. I mean, that's not the, I don't know if that's the path I would follow, you know, <laughs> I but it, we're, I think people are getting desperate. You know, they're nobody can figure out how do we fix the problem. You know that that's the that's the real problem is nobody can figure out what the what is the answer. You know, and that's why at the state level, you know, I know the states have the power. It's getting the Democrats and the Republicans at the state level to fix the government. You know, they the state level Democrats and Republicans need to sit here and get together well, and, well, he, and fix this problem. Well, here's an issue. Um, during the Reagan administration, you had um, there was a law up until then. So, like, news companies had to give a balanced form of news. So, it could be neither right nor left, it had to be balanced. Yeah. Um, during the Reagan administration, they got rid of that law. And that's when you see the uprising of like Fox News and one, one sided journalism. Sure. And I, I think like maybe going back to that might resolve some problems. Yeah. But I, I don't see that happening because the people who would fund these things fund, you know, our um, congressmen and congresswomen, and they're going to argue in that freedom of speech principle. But the problem is, is like, there's a certain responsibility of freedom of speech too. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't stand for like hate speech. I don't stand for like, people advocating for violence. I believe in giving people like dialogues, discourse. You know, so it, like it was brought up during like my interviews with you, like, you know, what, what's your thought about, you know, you guys having your platform, your rally, and then letting the counter protesters come up and say their spiel. And I was like, that's the kind of protesting that I like. You know I mean? I know there's tactics with the vans and all that kind of stuff, but like, I don't really believe in that. Um, yeah. Make yourself a symbol, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm dealing with the repercussions of that myself, but um, but I'm I'm okay with it too. You know what I mean? Because I think that what it is, it just demonstrates the cowardness of other people. I looked like pink panties. What the hell are they talking about? Whatever. All right. But yeah. Uh, any more questions or anything? We're going to do some the board, and I'll get off here. Well, behind the mirror said it looked like I had pink panties. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, I can see my, my underwear is not pink. I'm looking to see. Usually this site, they're slowing down. I can't believe there's like 61 people on here still. Well, that's because I'm on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't, you don't bring that kind of draw. Actually, I do the first few times I can. Oh, do you? Yeah. I'm just teasing. You, oh, no, you know, I'm, I'm just teasing. You actually beat Originally, I was beating you on Wyckoffs. 
And then okay, I, eventually, I, I think you eventually I, got a hundred more nutted. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if behind the mirror has been drinking because these are getting kind of weird. Have you ever blown a tranny in your mud truck? Um, no. I don't know which way to take this. You know, if he's talking about physically or if he's being, you know, smart ass, I, I don't know. Um, no, I haven't. Turbo well, 400 is one of the strongest trainings they make. Well, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'll send you a message okay. about Sunday. Maybe we can go out to dinner or something like that. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. He, he did mean it that way because he's like, I'm just messing with you. So he did He did mean to, it, it, to, to yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But, um, uh, send me a message on Discord and when we will call one another and figure it out. All right. All right. Take care, man. All right. Bye. Peace out, man. Peace out, everyone. Yeah, it's uh, three. Live long and prosper. Live, live. Uh, can usually do that. Live long and prosper. Yeah. <laughs> right. Better, better with this hand. Yeah. Live long and prosper. Or, or nanu, nanu. Remember nanu, nanu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nanu. No, no. You, you got to do yours that way. It's you know that it was something like that. Nanu, nanu. <sighs> I miss him. It's too bad. It's too bad. Depression took him out. <laughs> Take care, man. Take care. Hi, Granny Sue. Do you guys have any uh, other questions? Seeing how I didn't do Mechanic After Dark, and I see some of my people from my chat in here. Anybody have any questions? Before I wrap it up. <laughs> They're just silly this late. Thank you, Granny Sue. I have no problem talking to Telescope. You know, like I said, I've got no problem talking to somebody. If they're, if they're not attacking me and they're treating me with respect and, you know, and we're having a real conversation and they're not talking over me and I'm not talking over them, it, it, it's productive, I think, you know. Um... You know, and, you know, I'm willing to talk to anybody and I'm, I'll be the first one to admit that I'm naive on a lot of things. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm not the best read person when it comes to <clears throat> how everything works. You know, I don't, I haven't done as much research as a lot of people that are diehard, um, people that have done a, a shitload of research. I just, it's a lot of things are things I have researched and I just feel passionate about. Um, and I just try my best, you know. Well, thank you, Obi. Oh no, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, uh, I'm leaving on Monday. Like I said, I, you know, something drastic would have to change. A whole bunch of information would have to come out, you know, to get me to change my mind about staying. So, you know, the lack of information, I'm leaving. I'm going home, uh, Josephine. Uh, I want to be home for my birthday. I, I yeah, no, I, I, I mean, that's what this country was based on was the reason people were to bear arms was to keep the government in check um, so that they didn't, they feared the people. If you take away all the guns or you limit the guns that they have, at some point the government won't fear, won't fear the people. 
you know, that's what our nation was based on. Uh, no, I agree with you. We're all people. I, we just need to figure out a way to come together and not have a left or a right side. Sassy pants. Well, I'm going to still be streaming. Um, and I may still, and I'll probably still be watching you guys. And I'll still be interacting with you guys here and there. I just don't know to what level because... Once I get back to my life, you know, my life is going to probably, just like your lives, uh, will probably get in the way. And I don't know what how much time I'll be able to dedicate to, to doing this. Right now, you know, you guys see me online more on this stuff on my streams because I have the time. You know, once I get back to, to my life and working and fixing things and going to events, uh, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. You know, right now I was waiting for my truck, you know. I'm only here because I'm waiting for uh, for Mike so we can convoy together. Uh, wonderful evening. We really appreciate you coming on seriously. And Lou's, I've got my eyes are so screwed right now. Lou's body, dementia, took gin out, Eric. Okay. I don't know. What I probably didn't read that right because my eyes can't focus on my phone. I thought it was depression. I thought he, I thought he was just, you know, I thought it was depression that took out Robin Williams. He was, I, that's what I thought I heard is that he was just a very depressed person. And, but okay, I'll have to look that up. I, I thought I heard it was, it was depression. Okay. Oh, it's Jeff. How you doing, Jeff? You're a BTM legend, I guess. I just doubted him. Yeah. As soon as I outed him, and I didn't really mean to, but he came onto my stream as Ghost. So I guess that's. I guess I outed him and he realized, oh shit, because he came on to my stream as Ghost and then came on here. I guess I accidentally outed him. Oops, sorry. Sorry, Jeff. And uh, yeah, he turned it off right away. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Behind the Mirror. All right, anybody got any more questions for me? Otherwise, I'm going to go to bed. Cause it's uh, 3:37. You know, I'll uh, 
I'll pretty much talk about almost anything. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to smoke one more cigarette before bed. And then, uh, if you guys got really nothing for me, I'll, uh, I'll end this. Uh, actually, right now you're on a red cord. Uh, the orange cord was in the truck, so you're on a red cord right now. The blue cord is my uh, my headset. I unloaded the entire uh, Jeep into my truck and the orange grid got put away. Well, it's a lot easier than starting up a mechanic after dark because then, then everybody wouldn't let me shut it down and I'd be up till uh, sun up. So, ha! I'm a trader because I used a red cord to keep you alive. Oh no. Sorry. It's just a cord. Trader, because I used a red cord instead of it. I, at least I didn't lie about it. I could have lied and said it was an orange cord. You guys would have never known. You guys like me for that. I don't lie. Uh, they probably don't know about that I was alive on this. I wasn't planning on being up this late either. I was planning on knowing me maybe doing it till uh, one or something. Just kind of uh, kind of got carried away. That's very sad. I'll have to look into that, but that's very sad. If you had dementia, some type of dementia. I like Taco Joe. I like Taco Joe too. Well, thank you. Well, I'm open minded. I think that's why people like me. I'm not closed minded and not willing to 
look at other viewpoints. Well, I still haven't actually met you. I, I, I like to meet people and judge them off of, you know, the vibe I get and in-person conversations. I've never actually talked to you other than chat and chat is very impersonal. So, I mean, you know, and I also, this is probably the most I've been uh, involved with uh, behind the mirror. So, you know. I haven't looked at any of your past videos. I haven't seen what other comments you've had. I can't really voice an opinion about you. You know, thus far, you seem to be fine. You have a good night. I just finished my last cigarette. Unless I see some comments come in or questions in the immediate future, I'm going to probably get off this, finish my soda, and go to bed. I'm getting tired. Wow. 14 hour stream. Well, yeah, but part of it was you were just playing music, you know, and people were just chatting. You know, that was, a lot of it was chat. Yeah. I kind of like when you do panels, though. I'm not the fastest reader, so just watching chat is kind of boring to me, personally. Well, you know, I, I'll try to give anybody a chance. You know, that's why I gave Doe a chance. That's why I gave Behind the Mirror a chance. Tommy, Tommy, Temper, and uh, Fry, even though every single one of you guys was was told to me to be trolls. You know, so, you know, I, 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 uh, I base my opinions on my interactions with people, not what other people uh, say. You know, but uh, last thing I'm going to say before I end this, because uh, there's no comments coming in, is uh, Democrats, Republicans, uh, we got to get on some common ground. And uh, I think we all agree the government's broken and there's issues that we can all agree about what the government's broken about. And we need to focus on those and not get distracted by all the other issues that we don't agree about you know we need to fix the core problems in the government um and then we can sit here and start working on the the differences you know we got to come together we've got to uh unite and get our government back on a ground that we can actually do something and be productive because i think right now with it broken there nothing can get accomplished you know We've got to fix the uh, we got to fix the core of what's wrong with our government, and uh, we got to come together, uh, united, uh, in that goal, and uh, then go from there. You know, so I think that's uh, that's what, how I'm going to end this, and that's how I'm going to leave it, and uh, that's what it is. So, you know, you guys have a great night. I'm going to go to bed. Um, Thank you for having me on here. Uh, thanks for not sliming me too hard. I mean, I saw a few comments that were a little negative, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. Everybody's got their own opinion. Um, and uh, uh, please get the tires before you leave. I think the tires, I think the tires are going to be fine. And uh, to buy them locally is just going to be, with as expensive as the tires are, it's going to cost me a shitload more to buy the tires locally than to order them online and just get them when I get home. Um, 
I think I'll be fine. I've got a spare. So, you know, I, I'm going to take that calculated risk, you know, to get home and uh, just deal with it when I get home. So, yeah, get tires. Thanks, Granny. Um, you know, the only real tire that was super sketch is the front tire. And I uh, changed that out with the brand new, well, the spare that's got good tread. So, you know, it is what it is. So, all right. You guys have a good night. Take care. Uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime. So I'm going to get out of here. Good night, everybody. And uh, everybody have a good night. And wish you the best of luck.